All right, so I want to go through these and look at them mostly for ideas right now. We can talk a little bit about um, execution. Everybody can still hear me, right? Yep. Okay. Um, I think my lighting looks so much better now because my lights came in. Okay. Hang on, let me look through here. I only saw a couple of them. I didn't really get a chance to look at very many of them. How many pages did we say? Two? Um, Canvas five. says two. Oh, it's five? Okay. Canvas says yeah. two, and you said five in class last week. Okay, so then I'll have to accept two if I accidentally put that on Canvas. Okay? Yeah, that's why I emailed you, because I did two, because it says it on Canvas, and then I freaked out, and I saw the note on my, on my computer that said five. If I make a mistake, then I have to eat it, because that's my fault. First week's always a little bit chaotic, and then we get into a groove, and it's all fine. Okay. Where's Arlene at? You here? Let me check the participants list. Hello? Oh, yeah, you're there. Where are you at? Okay, I'm looking at, go ahead. By the way, we had the cable guy out, so I'm hoping that my internet now is better. He replaced all that stuff downstairs. Okay, so let's go, let me share my screen. Okay, so Arlene. Uh, okay, so what are we thinking here? Um, honestly, I had a hard time with it because I was just trying to think of like different scenarios. Um, but, you know, friendly, you know, alligator coming in and just popping in, visiting, and then somehow just joins in on different activities is entertainment or does the same thing as a backpack. I don't know. I was kind of, and then does a little bit of the uh, activities at school, joining in on stuff. I had a dog that did that. And what's the last one, the fourth one? Fourth one? Yeah. Uh, on this page? Yeah. Oh, uh, it was, I think, like just going up the stairs, like, Students kind of seeing them go up, they're like, oh, look at the alligator with the kid. And then, I don't know, the alligator, I think I put it separately. It's not like one whole page. So it was like going through the walker. Probably just gonna read that way. And then here, he's playing basketball and stuff, right? Basketball, some kind of soccer game. Uh, it kind of takes it a little bit from a visual perspective to a, a little bit of a different place. Does that make sense? Oh, uh, what do you mean? Well, it's starting to become about like he's kind of playing with the other kids, but what does it mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is, that's why we're doing this, okay? One of the big things about, um, to me, about illustration I like about it is you really got to dig deep to find the ideas, okay? Um, especially, you know, because usually you're dealing with text or something like that or a story or whatever, and you don't really, I mean, you have big handles in children's illustration because you can do outrageous, crazy things, and that's fun. You got that, you know what I mean? But it's always got to serve the text. Does that make sense? You there? Arlene? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, um, when you say like it needs to serve the text, do you mean like I'm always thinking of the text first and then think visually after or? I think you kind of have to. I think you got to read that text and then like, okay, so like in this case, he's playing basketball, right? So the thrust of the text, the punchline basically is she's, you know, if your teacher asks you to do this and then the punchline is she does not want you to bring an alligator. That means there's some payoff there visually. Does that make sense? Okay. Because if he's playing basketball with everybody, that's actually kind of cool. Why wouldn't I want him there if he's cool like that, right? 
I think it's a little more the idea of that's outrageous and crazy and whatever, right? Yeah. So like, would I need to um, do more like uh, of a, I guess like students and everybody being in shock? Cause I think I was kind of, I mean, Oh, he just happened to like play by basketball. I don't think I really expressed it, but the, the people there are like, what are you doing playing basketball here? Yeah, you could, I mean, you could take that approach where people are reacting to it or um, like, I kind of like this idea just because it's so silly. The one where he's got a hula hoop or something or whatever he's doing, dancing or whatever there. Um, you know that there's some there might be something there now sometimes let's be clear here sometimes if you're doing a book like this it might be it's probably not going to be over 29 pages or so um sometimes you are sort of illustrating the scene sometimes there is a little bit of um sort of just resting on illustrating the scene but on this one we've got some type that i think that we can punch it okay just like that punch line's being punched uh what's going on with this first one here he's in the window or something I'm getting a lag on you. Is there some reason for that? Hello? Yeah. Why am I getting such a long lag? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, okay. I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, he's just popping into the window and then kind of showing teacher shocks. Like, what was he doing there? And then Like, it could be as simple as if this, this di or a dinosaur, if this alligator is big, um, an animal like that, and I know it's, we're not making a documentary here, obviously, okay? But it could be as simple as, you know, she could be standing up there, like maybe on the second one here, right here, um, okay. where if I made him ridiculously big, right, because these are little kids, right, mm -hmm. he's got a tail, um, he's clumsy, I could have that room behind him sort of trashed where his tail knocked a bunch of stuff off the desk and you know, so on and so forth, right? And it's just that idea of he's big and clumsy and he's not supposed to be in this environment. But then she's sort of like, hey, check him out dancing. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So it could just be the idea that he's just big. I was thinking about this because I'm playing around with this thing with this bear thing. And um, I was thinking about that where the bears come in to get beer over at the restaurant, you know, you'd have to have a rule where it's like, no, 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 you guys order your beers out here because once you come inside, you're a bunch of clumsy bears and you're going to knock everything over because it's a small space. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think there's something here maybe. And by the way, I think your, your thumbnails are pretty clear. Oh, okay. Like I can read them pretty good. So, so here you're starting to get into that problem, what I was saying, where it's not an iteration of ideas, it's an iteration of one idea. Because he's playing basketball, then he's playing soccer, then he's running, he's playing track and field. That's all the same idea. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. Right? It's common, okay? The reason I'm trying to push you guys to do this is at some point you've got to learn to think conceptually. And not just an illustration, if you're going to go into entertainment design or any that kind of stuff. Or concept design. I mean, the name of a concept designer is you come up with concepts, which means somebody's going to give you some problem to solve. And to me, creativity is creativity. It doesn't matter. Um, and you've got to solve that problem, okay? And you've got to think conceptually. And if you come in with just pat answers, you're going to get fired in like five minutes because they're going to go, I need great ideas. I, I can't just, you know, I can't have pedestrian ideas. Or if you show an art director, you know, a bunch of stuff. Now, you not to say that you can't go down different paths. Like if you like this idea and you go, well, should it be soccer? Should it be this? You know, maybe there's more to play with visually with soccer. Like that kind of thing is fine. I'm not saying you should never do that. Just know that when an art director or whatever asks you for um, a bunch of ideas, they don't want to see the same idea iterated on. Does that make sense? Yeah. So are you saying to um, like in one page, it should be four separate ideas? Okay. It's hard too, by the way, I get it. Okay. Um, it's really hard. And what I would say to this is like, whenever we're doing, I don't think I said this last time and I should have, whenever we're doing a project like this, I would, uh, probably by the next day, especially when it's thumbnails by the next day, I would have like that day after the meeting, I'd probably go and do some research 
And then the next day I'm going to start thumbnailing because I want to have enough time to go. Uh, I'm out of ideas. I'm going to go just forget about this for a while because there's a point where you sort of peter out and you have to just let that happen. Okay. But if you're doing everything at the last minute, you don't have that luxury. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. You can't sit on anything and go, cause man, I can't even tell you every single thing I do. If I have time, um, to look at things, just to look at things, um, you know, I'll think it looks fine or whatever. And then the next day I wake up in the morning, I look at it and I go, man, that's not done. Then I go and mess around with it some more. And then I go, eh, I should really change that, throw that arm out a little more. You know, he's walking forward. I should throw that arm out, you know, or whatever it is. And I keep seeing these things and it's hard to see them when you've just been working on it for hours. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. Okay. So I would go maybe kind of work up this guy, the second one here a little bit, put numbers on two, one, two, three, four, five. So we know which ones we're talking about. Okay. okay. Um, I don't know about this one. I don't, I kind of like him looking through the window. I just think I need a little more oomph. Does that make sense? Oomph like as in a, uh, well, right now, more like visual clarity of it or uh, exaggeration. Yeah. yeah. A little more exaggeration, a little more punch, a little more something happening. Also, if you notice this shape, you know, the height of this shape, this shape, even this shape, they're all the same size, more or less. Do you see that? Yeah. So make sure that, you know, you can always um, have some kind of like interesting visual shapes going on. Yeah, you always want to have, um, yeah, hang on. Um, but like the, the main thing in focus, other than just in the background. That too. You want to have a definitely, you, you ideally want to have a first, second, third read. Like my eye goes bam, right where you want me to go. Then it goes to the second. Like maybe my eye goes right to the alligator, then to the teacher, and then the kids in the foreground or something like that. Okay. But like, you know, play around with it. It doesn't have to be that flat. Like maybe the window's here and the alligator's looking in the window here. You know, maybe he's, he's got those little hands like hanging onto the window right here. And I'm not saying this is the solution. I'm just saying I would, I would try different staging, right? Okay. That's you know, maybe the kids back here in the room doing their presentation. And here's the chalkboard now. And then the chalkboard... You know, maybe I can get it big enough. I don't think it quite is big enough here. It's going to end here. But if I can get this chalkboard to overlap his snout, that's good because I get some overlap. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so maybe it's that. And then maybe there's three kids here sort of pulling back from him a little bit. And their desks are right here. And there's three kids all bunched up, like going, whoa, because he's coming in the window. Or he wouldn't be smiling. Okay, so that could be just a different way of staging it. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And then maybe there was a plant here or a you know, flower on the window, but he knocked one over. You know, so the plant's down here and maybe knock something else over. You know, because you can really, you know, you got to remember this is a kid's book. Okay. So are you saying like um, kind of incorporate a little bit of prop interaction with props maybe with? I, I think you want to, um, if I'm going to put some big bulky thing, I'm going to play with that size relationship because A, these are little kids. Alligators can be big, so why wouldn't I want to play with that? I like the idea of, because we just talked about it, of him being clumsy. So if he's kind of like looking in the, it's kind of like a dog. You get a big Great Dane, and they just think they're a puppy. They run through the house and just tear the place to pieces. You know what I mean? Um, and he's very unself-aware of his um, clumsiness and his size. Um, 
you know, it's one thing I might explore. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And then, you know, playing around the staging, because you got to be careful if everything's sort of this straight dead on staging, right? And the reality of this, uh, like when I wrote my kid's book, um, I, I might have said this, I don't know if I did. I just got little probably three by five cards, flipped them over on the blank side. I had a big piece of foam core and I would just go, here's the dialogue. I'd just write the dialogue on Cause usually in a kid's book, it's like one or two sentences or whatever. Then I just do a quick little drawing of the scene and I just start putting all this together. And then as I'm building the story, then I'm going, Oh, this doesn't work over here. I got to change these two panels. Now I got to change the start of the story because I changed that. And you're, you're, you're figuring out the story. But at the same time, I'm looking at every, it's like a storyboard. I'm looking at every shot, every page layout or whatever. And I'm going, I got too many shots of everything up close. I've got too many shots of everything straightforward. Everybody's small. I got to look at every shot next to each other and go, oh, there's a big establishing shot here. Now I can do a pull back a little bit and show the school, so on and so forth. Does that make sense? It's got to visually flow. Does that That's make sense? Kind of like a, just different perspectives. Yeah, just, you you know, you, you can't have too many of the same. It's just like they do with a movie when you talk about storyboarding. Yeah. You know, if you did every shot where the camera's locked down and the guys or the actors are, I don't know, mid-room, like here's the two actors interacting, and you're doing shot after shot of that kind of thing, it's going to get pretty boring. You know what I mean? That's why they'll do that, and they'll do that establishing shot of two actors talking, then all of a sudden they do a close-up of this guy talking to that guy, and then they do a close-up of this guy talking to that guy, then they might do another shot back here, you know, so on and so forth. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Sorry. Hello. Can you hear okay. Me? So all that made sense. Yeah. That, thank you. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. So go, um, you know, there might be something to play with, with this window idea. I think there's something to play with, with this idea. This is now two different ideas in this, or is this one idea here? Uh, it was kind of, I think it's like kind of together one idea. Yeah. And what is it? They're all in the um, cafeteria? Yeah, eating cafeteria and then the scene. Okay, the cafeteria thing, because I like the idea of him um, interacting with the other kids, okay? But, you know, it could be, I want to get that visual of however the kids are interacting with him. So it could be, it could even be this. I mean, it could be a couple things. So it could be this, and all the kids are eating at this end of the table. And they're all sort of bunched up on each other again, right? They got their lunches and all that stuff. And then he's over here, this big... Maybe looking over at the kids. Oops. In other words, he's this big hulking thing at this end of the table and all the kids are way over here because he's an alligator. Does that make sense? Yeah. That makes sense. Or we could go, he's an alligator. So maybe he's tipping the whole table, you know, and the kids are all trying to hang on over here and all their stuff sliding down here obviously, because he's an alligator and he's too big for this table and he's tilting the whole table up. Does that make sense? Yeah, adding a little exaggeration there. Yeah, you want tons of that, okay? It's, it's you know, why? I think the thrust of that text is, is she does not mean for you to bring an alligator, okay? That's the thrust of it, okay? Because usually these things you did, I mean, if you guys ever did this stuff on your kids, it's usually pretty pedestrian. It's kids bringing in like, really uninteresting stuff. It's not very interesting. You know, maybe it is when you're a kid, but okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So push it. We always want to push it. Okay. By the way, you guys don't upload things to canvas. I don't like using canvas for um, file management. Okay. It's just kind of hard to, um, it's just hard to manage them. I like it better on the Google Drive. I like Canvas for everything else, but not that. Where's the chat? I check the chat every once in a while.
Somebody said in here they try to work in 30 minute increments. I wouldn't do that. You want to get into a flow. You want to get in that zone. I mean, everybody's different. And somebody said, you go back in, block things with colored pencil and all that, separate your sketches, that's fine. Separate your scribbles or whatever. That's a good idea. Okay. So let's go <laughs> look at the next one. Okay, this one, try not to give them to me as um, PDFs because it's, well, actually I take that back because I think I can open it here. Hang on. It should ask you which pages or how many pages you want to open. I'm going to open it in Photoshop. Come on. Hang on. Oh, hang on. Now my computer's doing something weird again. The problem with it, it's, it's, I mean, I can, usually can open it in Photoshop and it's fine, but it's, it's just a little more trouble. Yeah, see, so now it's giving me this, which I don't like. So I got it, it's, it's better if they're just like JPEGs or something. And then. Hang on. See, it, it slows it down. Where are you? Now it's going to want to do this on everything. All right. Well, I mean, normally uploading PDFs is actually good, so I sort of specified that actually. Because normally it's good to get them in PDFs. It's just on these we want to be able to work over them. Do I have three or four here? I have four, okay. You have five. Oh, five? You should have five. One, two, I'll find out, hang on. Let me get rid of this stupid thing. We got one. This is annoying. Yeah, one, two, three. Yeah, I got five. Okay. Okay. Okay, so what are we thinking here? Well, five pages was getting to the point of trying to find other things to do. So the last page is definitely, I was running out of ideas. But um, one of them is uh, he's going to his locker to go get the alligator out of there. The second one, um, the alligator sw uh, swallowed him, and he went to school, and he's giving his presentation from the alligator's mouth. Oh, that's kind of funny. Um, the third one, the alligator is just popping out of his backpack, and he like didn't get a chance to even say what he brought. It just he just kind of popped out. And then the last one, they're both wearing masks, and they're going to give a presentation, which is current, but yeah. The problem I'd say with that for me is if it's not part of the storyline, it's going to be weird. Like in, when, when, if this ever ends, which is starting to feel like it never is, um, it'll be a little weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just, somebody, even though everybody's probably going to know that we did this, it's going to, believe it or not, it'll fade and people will be like, why are they wearing surgical masks? I don't get it. You know? Yeah. It's just my well was capped dry by that one. Yeah, I get it. We <laughs> all do that. I had so, a, um, I had a teacher, and I always tell this in my classes, 
and he used to terrify me. He was a little guy, and he used to terrify me, and his class was just an all-day crit. And uh, he was so psychological, and like to your point, like when you're running out of ideas, so he'd go, I want five ideas for next week or whatever. And he would always know everything, which is also scary about him. And uh, I had, I think I had to do five ideas and I got to the, it was three o'clock in the morning or something. And I, I got to see one more idea and I just did some half ass idea just to fill up the page. And then in the crit, he was like, giving, he was going, Hey, this is pretty cool. And this is pretty cool. And which he didn't do all the time. Like he's a really hard ass crit, crit person. And then he got to that one and he goes, and this is the one at three o'clock in the morning. We didn't give a shit anymore. And you put that on there. And I was like, damn, he even knows what time I did it. You know what I mean? And that guy yeah. just scared me to death. Okay. But man, he was a good teacher. I got to get him that. But, um, okay. So what are we doing here? So the upper left there, um, I, you know, started thinking about like the, the alligators in the sewers and like Lake Placid. So it was a giant alligator. That's just, all you see is his eye in the window. So the teacher's like freaking out. Yeah. That's like a, alligator. Little bit, a little bit of a different story, but I like that you're kind of exploring a bunch of different ideas. Cause I think that's what you should be doing. Okay. Yeah. So the kid's like doing his show and tell, but he's pointing at the window. So it's just that giant alligator. That's all you see is his eye. Yeah. And you know, if the, if the story had context for that, because again, we're doing, one page, one two page spread out of a thing that would normally be, you know, 29 pages. Right. <clears throat> so we're kind of doing a little snapshot, not relating to all the rest of the story, which normally it would be relating to the rest of the story. But I like that you're going for it. Like you're just trying stuff. That's what you should be doing. And all your ideas aren't the same, you know, and they're good ideas. Okay. What's this one here? Um, well, you know, like the first iterations were all like, you know, kind of big size alligators and then like baby alligators. So with this one, I kind of went a little more like, I guess, Jurassic Park where it's the, the alligators just coming out of his egg. Well, both of these would be a little uh, Jurassic Park because there's that scene in Jurassic Park and then the trailer and the thing looks in the window and his eye dilates. True, true. But I mean, I bet you I can find, didn't that happen in King Kong too? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it happened even, I think, in the 70s version of King Kong. No, yeah, these things are tropes. I mean, they're, yeah, I was just about to say that. So yeah. Typical trope, for sure. And, that, and by the way, that doesn't always mean they're bad, okay? Right, right. They're tropes for a reason. You know why they're tropes? Because they work. Yeah. So then this other one on the lower left is the kid um, taking his alligator to school, but the um what do you call it his little wagon is filled with water so he's just kind of swimming around i think there's another way to look at that too because i love the um him going to school um wait i already had one up oh well um you know again you could play with that size relationship with The wagon. Let's go a little lower. Come on. You know, the little wagon thing and the kid pulling it. You know, it could be, again, this monstrously big thing. Mm -hmm. this tail i always like to play with the tail maybe he's got like because i like the idea of him being friendly <laughs> i want the so, opposite direction <laughs> yeah maybe he's like you know he's got a sandwich or he's got his little lunch bag or something you know and again the funny little feet thing yeah um and then the kid maybe having to strain quite a bit to pull this thing. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's really pulling it. Yeah. And then, you know, I'd make him look way more kid. That kid would have to way more kid than what I'm drawing. Yeah. And then I might do, you know, 
just so I get some sense of perspective here, I might do the, what do you call that? Crosswalk? crosswalk marks. Yeah. Yeah, the crosswalk. And then what's fun is you could have these, like you have these vehicles with people totally tripping out on it. You know, like everybody's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because then you get your reaction and something besides you got it out of the classroom, which I always think is cool. You know, you could have the school bus with the school bus driver and just everybody sort of mouth agape, just like not terrified, just like, what the hell? Yeah. Right? Which would be kind of fun. That'd be actually a really fun scene, I think. You know, and then you can have the trees back here and oh, on the side of the road, actually. That kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then they have these things on their back. Yep. And I would do something with that tail. I don't know what. Maybe it's just going up like that. Maybe it's doing that thing like cats do. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But that, I like that idea. Where's that at? Right. Where'd it go? No. No. Once I get past a certain, it gets a pain. It gets to be a pain in the ass. I think it was like three. Okay, let's try three. No, I guess it was four. What is it? Four? Yeah. I know it's not one of the first ones. One How did I lose this? Three. Yeah, it's four. Oh, it's four. Okay. Yeah. There it is. I like this idea. Okay. Mm hmm. Then what's going on here? Uh, the alligator ate the teacher, and he's wearing her, her uh, dress. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Now, again, that's getting a little dark. <laughs> right? Well, I wasn't sure, and I was like, I'll just go, go dabble a little bit in that direction. I, I mean, you know, look, there's one thing I say about college that I think is cool. I mean, we have to talk about realities and stuff like that. But it's also, to me, it's a place where you really need to be able to experiment a little bit. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, a real art director is going to go, come on, man. You can't go that dark or whatever, you know. But in college, I think it's a little different. I think you need to flex your creative muscles a little bit. I didn't put blood dripping, so, you know, it's not that dark. Yeah, but you also got to explain to me what happened there. Yeah, yeah. There wasn't enough to just him being surprised and having the alligator in her dress. Really yeah, because then it just seems like he's like, there's an alligator dressed like a woman here. Why? <laughs> yeah. It's that Which, I like non sequitur. So to me, that's funny. But you can't have a non sequitur in a children's book, <laughs> right? Yeah. But I like the way you're thinking, though. Okay, let's look at this one. This one's number two. So the upper left, um, they're right. The alligator's riding the bike to school, and he's just in the back. Um, you know, since the alligator's supposed to be bigger, um, he's the one that's basically taking him to school. Yeah. And then, you know, I was kind of trying to reach for something a little bit different and out there. So the next one I went with, it's a uh, alligator. It turns out that he found him in the forest, but he's from outer space. So he's in this funky space suit with like claws and stuff. That's a whole other story. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, what's his, what's his bottom left one? The bottom left one, since, you know, it's his alligator. His alligator loves to cook, so he was making them breakfast. <laughs> Before school? Yeah. The only part I – because I like it when you get them out of the classroom. I kind of like that. The only part of it is I go, how does that relate to doesn't want you to bring an alligator? True. Right? Yeah. And then what's this one here, the, ne the next one? So he, he's doing the show and tell, but I kind of took it a little sci-fi for some strange reason, wherever he takes the alligator, this like pond goes with him. So he's kind of in the pond that show and tell, but um, like he's kind of eyeing some of the students. Yeah, there's something funny about that. Like if you did that throughout the book where he was always having to travel with his pond. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's funny is that alligators do that thing when they're in the water and they look all sinister and all you see is their eyes. You know, so and then, you know, him eyeballing some kids. I think that's funny. I don't think that's too dark. I just think it's funny. And then just for, for kicks, I put Lake Placid on the kid's shirt. 
Just to relate back to it. Yeah. So let's go three. Yeah, three and one. Yeah. So here's three. So three on the upper left. He's little, but he uh, he's educated. So he brought him the show and tell, and he's reading Shakespeare. Okay, that's funny. I like that. So I was going to put like a little puffy hat on his head or something to kind of reinforce the whole Shakespeare thing, but I figured I'll leave it right there. Actually, that's funny though. <laughs> like if you did, if you're going to do that, man, go over the top. Like if you're going to do that, put him in the whole Shakespearean outfit. All you right. Think, you know what I mean? Yeah. So then the next one, um, he's holding what could be ham or a turkey leg. Nobody knows for sure. And there could, cause it could be a kid's leg, you know? going dark again yeah so the kids are kind of worried that it could be uh something else by the way if he's doing shakespeare i think you need to see him like see more of him yeah but also he needs to be you know like the big floppy hat with the feather in it mm-hmm and, you know, he's mouths open, eyes are closed, maybe. And <clears throat> he's got maybe the book here that he's holding with the little, I like the little tiny alligator hands. It's just, I always think that's funny. Yeah. And then, you know, maybe he's sort of, standing in sort of stagey way and then this hand would be up like super the whole thing where he's emoting does that make sense yeah what about if he's reading like um shoot what's all of a sudden i i blanked on the name but he's holding up the skull and reciting yeah i mean you can use all those tropes if you want to do them from shakespeare you know yeah yeah the whole to be or not to be that whole thing right. he's, he's got his textbook here and his but he could also just be, you know, wildly emoting, you know? And then the kids, you know, he's gonna be here. You know, maybe the kid's like going ta-da with his hands out. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing, okay? Yeah. Figure out his legs. No, make him look silly, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about silly. All right, let's go. That was three, right? Here we go. And then, okay, what do we got here? So then the bottom one, I was just kind of looking for stupid puns, and it turns out that he's he's an alligator, but he's actually a litigator. I like that. So his uh, briefcase says litta hyphen gator. I don't think you could get away with it, but I like that thinking. He's a <laughs> litigator, right? Yeah. <laughs> I have a friend that's a lawyer, and for whatever reason, like we, I went to go see his family for dinner yesterday, so litigator popped in my head. That's what I like, too, is you start making all these connections. Yeah. And this one, he's just a really oversized alligator, and it's just, you know, just kind of doing the scale thing, so it's, he's so big that you basically just see a piece of him. Okay, what's great about that, too, is that's another way to show the idea of scale when you really push the scale, which is great. And then the, the, the teacher's taken off, right? Yeah, yeah, she's running. I mean, you can have all the kids, like, I don't know if you've ever seen those. Um, one of the things I used to always love about those, <clears throat> like, uh, Godzilla movie posters and the old monster mm -hmm. movie posters, mm -hmm. is they'd have the monster rampaging the city, but in the foreground, it was all these people, like, running for their lives. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? I do. And they'd all be like hands out, screaming, and you know, running towards the camera. And the background is this monster, you know, tearing the whole city apart. I mean, you could kind of do that kind of thing of it with it too, if you want to go really over the top, where I everybody's was, fleeing the room. You know what I mean? Yeah, I definitely was thinking Godzilla something at some point, but this is probably about as close as I got. But I love that, like cutting off everything else except just that one part of him. That's that's really cool because now you're really pushing the scale, you know. Yeah, and maybe make him a little bit smaller so it helps kind of push the scale even further. And what I like about this is when you guys, because every you guys do this all the time, 
like, cause I, you know, I have this assignment, I've done it. And then you guys always come up with so many iterations of things that I never would have thought of, which is really, cause I'm always talking about scale, but I haven't done the scale like that before. And that's really smart. Okay. Let me go. Where'd it go? So that's three. Let's see about four. I think we did the other ones. So it's, yeah. Did I go through them all? No, number one. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. There's that one. Um, that's not number one. That's the last one. Yeah. This, no. this is number one, right? Yeah. So, okay, so what's happening here? So it's the show and tell scene and this one though, like I put him in a jacket and tie and then I just put a little name tag that said dad because the surprise is that he is doing a show and tell, but his dad's an alligator. <laughs> okay. What's this next one? Um, just him and, and the alligator walking to school. It was a variation on the crosswalk one, except this one was more about just it being big and they're both walking, holding hands. And then everybody's kind of looking at them in a little bit. I of think shock. you encapsulated that better in the other one. Yeah, I did this one first and then I did the other one um, later. Okay, so this is a good example of when I say I want individual ideas. This is an iteration of an idea, but I feel like you needed to do this iteration to work that out. Yeah. Okay. So I don't want you guys to go, man, I'm, I think there's something here, but Mike said only do, you know, one idea and then move on. Sometimes you do need to stop and go, okay, I need to iterate on this idea a little bit because I think there's something here and then go, don't just count all those as one. Okay. Yeah. I actually, I like this one at first, but then the other idea popped in my head. I was like, Ooh, that's better. Well, you got a lot of things in the other one, you know, you got a wagon that's very kid. Mm -hmm. You got a scale relationship. You know, if if the alligator has something school like, whether it's a lunch pail or something like that, and maybe it's one of those <clears throat> branded lunch pails, and then I go to like, well, who would the alligator like? Like, what what entertainment property would he like? Would he like Jurassic Park? Would he, you know, what would he like? Yeah. Um, so I can keep. I like to keep gagging it up. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. What's this one here? That one is the scales reversed. So he brought his. Uh, alligator and the baby Bjorn. So he's like hanging off the front of him and he's just kind of pointing at him. Oh, one of those things they carry kids around in? Yeah, yeah, like that baby backpack for the front. So, you know, nothing spectacular, just a scale thing. And then this one, going through the locker uh, hallway, in the, you know, in front of the locker, and he's just riding the, the alligator tail. Now you could also go the other direction where everybody's not, <clears throat> Because what? Okay, so I had this dog when I was a kid, and I, I, this Simon always reminds me of this. And he was this real mangy, junkyard-looking dog, and he was mean, but he was cool, right? But he was also wild. He was just wild. So he'd get out all the time. And like I was at school one time, and the door was open, and you know, to the outside. <clears throat> and then I noticed Boogie was like laying outside the door. He showed up at my school, right? And it was really cool because he got, I got away with it for about two weeks where he would go out and play with everybody at, at uh, recess and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I totally would rather hang around with my dog and people when I was a kid. And, um, and then finally, she, he scared the hell out of the teacher because apparently she'd been attacked by a dog when she was a kid, but she tolerated it because I don't know, she tolerated a lot of stuff from me for some reason. This is like seventh grade. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so finally one day she goes, you know, he can't just keep coming to school every day. You know what I mean? And it's like the kids aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing at recess because they all just want to play with Boogie. They don't want to, you know, it's on and on and on, right? So you could go, <clears throat> this idea of riding him, um, you know, this could be, um, you know, maybe this big alligator, whatever he looks like, I'm not going to design him. But, you know, you could have <clears throat> a whole bunch of kids ride them almost like a bus, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Where, you know, and still in the hallway and all that kind of thing. And all the kids are happy and having fun and all that stuff. But that's disruptive and it's crazy and all that kind of stuff. So that could work too, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't always have to be tripping everybody out or scaring everybody. It could be that he's just like Boogie was. He was just a little too, um, the kids were just, you know, completely distracted by it. Right. Um, 
Well, you know, he could. I'd, I'd put him more in motion if they were right. I might have him sort of. I don't know what I would do. Maybe I think horse a little more horse pose. You know, where he's jumping or leaping. I don't know. Maybe one of the kids is flying off. That kind of thing, right? So that's a. I mean, that's a possibility. That's a possibility to go the other direction. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because it doesn't just like I said. It, the other thing that he could do is he could just be being disruptive, which he would be obviously. Yeah. So that was which one were you on five? Uh, that the last one you just did was the n- number one. Oh, okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I would say there could be something here. This is making too much a leap in story. I think this one you you solve a little further with the other one. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's that one. Then this one. I think I might play around with this a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, see if you can do it where it's not gruesome, where it's just silly. Well, it's supposed to look like he didn't actually swallow him, but you know, he happened to just—he was inside. He was carrying him, I guess, from inside, rather than like he ate him. Yeah, it's going to read that he got eaten. I don't know. I'd still play with it a little bit. Just fart around with it. This one, probably not. Nothing. There might be something with the backpack thing. This one I'm not concerned with. That's mine. I don't care about that. Uh, okay, this one. I think that's your star so far. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't care about that one or that one. I don't think this is a bad idea. I don't know if I pursue it, but I don't think it's a bad idea. And then, even though I love this, I, I don't think we could make that work. This, I think, is a definite possibility, this one. Because I always go with this thing where you're sort of like doing some crazy show or whatever. I love the idea of it being Shakespeare. You know what I mean? That's just better. Right. And there's so much you could play with visually with that. that. You know, part of the thing that's fun about this kind of thing, when you're doing it, you're going, at least for me, when I'm going, I'm going, I'm dying to paint this stuff. Like, I want to make something that I'm dying to paint. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm getting anxious to, like, want to hone in on, on one or two and kind of go, all right, because I can start to see, like you're saying, the painting part and it coming to life. What we got to do here is we're going to go through thumbnails. Um, you know, and I don't know how many you have here. You probably have four or five that are worth pursuing. Um, and then we'll sort of uh, start to refine a little bit, then get a little bigger and start to refine the actual drawing and then go to full size drawing. Right. Right. One of the main things you guys have got to learn how to do is go through a process where something, I think I've said this, something's paintable where it's designed and it's finished and it's paintable, okay? Um, For sure this one, uh, that's probably a little dark, that one. Don't worry about that one. And I think there might be something here. Okay. So let's see. And then this one, there might be something here. I, I wouldn't go after that one first, but there might be something to that. Like somebody did one one time where, you know, they have pets sometimes in classrooms, kids' classrooms. Mm-hmm. Um, and he had eaten like the class hamster or something. You know what I mean? They didn't yeah. show it or anything, but you just all of a sudden saw the empty cage or, you know, like in the background or whatever. <clears throat> and it worked. It wasn't too dark or whatever. Okay, so you know what you're doing, right? Yes, sir. Uh, what I'm going to do probably is nail these down for people. <clears throat> you know, um, to the ones who are the good ideas. And then at some point I'm going to start going, I'm not going to give you, I want this many pages because when you start iterating your ideas, <clears throat> you need to just go until you solve the idea. Does that make sense? Yeah. But what irritates me is then somebody goes, comes back and has two little drawings, you know, and you're like, that drives me crazy. Okay. Now, if they come back with two drawings and you're like, that's the solution then maybe that works, okay? But like, you need to go until you solve the problem. And if I go, you have to have five more, then you're just going after that five number 
or maybe you do 15 and to solve the problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. Although, you know, you did say since Kansas said two, I'm glad that I ended up ha like pushing myself to do the other three because I wouldn't have had like the wagon solution. Um, yeah. in there. It's, it's what I was talking about. Like when I do, whenever I do anything and I do that first, second or third thumbnail, I always think one of those is some brilliant idea. I don't know why. And then I go, okay, well, whatever. I just keep going, you know? And then I get to whatever, 25 of them. I get to that number. And then I look at those first three and I go, they're not even good ideas because I didn't, I can't contrast them to anything that's better if I don't do that exercise. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then at some point you peter out. You know what I mean? I mean, at some point you're just like, I'm out of ideas. One of the best people to look at or, or uh, illustrators to look at are, um, uh, editorial illustrators. I mean, they have to come up with solutions to politics and cultural things and commentary and op-ed. Those are hard things to do, you know, and not go for the obvious. Like the people right now who have to, um, you know, political cartoonists who are dealing with Trump right now, it's really hard because he's such a buffoon anyway. You know what I mean? He's kind of a cartoon character anyway. And they all say the same thing. Late night comedians say the same thing. They go, it's hard to to come up to this guy because he's such a jackass in real life. Normally what you're doing is making the president look a little more, look kind of silly, right? You can't make him look any more silly than he already does. He already embarrasses himself anyways. Yeah, right. So it's just sort of like, they're just like, what do we do with this guy? You know what I mean? He's just a, off the, and I think there's also a certain amount of fatigue with him. Mm -hmm. but I think people are just tired of his crap and his negativity and all that. Um, and I, I would think if you're doing him a lot, because you're going to be, if you're an editorial story, at some point you're like, man, I'm sick of this guy. I'm sick of like getting in his head. I'm sick of being in that world. I'm sick of all this negative, weird crap that's going on, so on and so forth. Right. But you got to keep coming up with ideas. That's really, I think it's really hard. And I think <clears throat> hopefully this is like any other thing you start doing in school. It gets in your brain and you start looking, really looking at solutions and really appreciating them. Like when you see, I see him all the time because I follow Steve Rodner and uh, there's a woman who's a really good, uh, she works at the Washington Post. She's an editorial illustrator. And they pop up like on my Twitter feed and things like that. And I go, man, how they can just crank these things out every day, man, into complex problems and they're funny and they're insightful and all that stuff. That's a really good thing to look at for solutions. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because those people tend to be at the top of the um, – I really feel like they're at the top of the game. When, whenever I would work on anything that was, like, entertainment-related, even if it was toys or whatever, there's a certain amount of things you can just sort of hide behind. Does that make sense? It does. Like, if you're doing – if I'm doing Marvel product, if I was still doing that stuff, uh, you know, if I go, let's do a super kick-ass – a uh, big action figure of whoever, you know, Thor or whatever, or all of them or whatever. I mean, I got the characters to hide behind. I don't really have to, I mean, you know, I would always try and innovate, but I mean, sometimes it is what it is. And you go, look, everybody's going to love that if we do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm not really doing anything. I'm just going, let's just do action figures, man. Cause it just is what it is, you know? And with those editorial people, they have, they can't do that. They got to come up with interesting solutions. Okay. No matter who it is. Yeah. There's a lot of television right now because there's so much good television. Breaking Bad's one of them. We look at it and you go, well, how the hell did they come up with this crazy ass story? You know what I mean? Yeah. Pure, it's pure creativity. Who knows where that came from? You know? Probably just popped in the guy's head and he developed it over years. Okay. Let me go to another one. Okay, I got a bunch of them here. Bunch of these. Oh, am I right here, Brandon? Okay, so you were doing them all on one page, right? Where are you? Brandon? Oh, I'm right here. Okay, so you were just like doing them one up on a page, right? Yeah, it was kind of getting cluttered with like all of them together. Okay, so let's go. All right, I'm just going to go through them this way. What do we have here? Sort of a show kind of thing? 
Yeah, so I was like thinking like uh, to make it like more like funny and unique instead of just like having the alligator there, like they would just like start dancing in front of the class like to showcase. And if I was going to do that to tie in the thing about they don't want you to bring an alligator, I'd probably have them have knocked a few things over. And like maybe have like the teacher in the background be like, oh no. Yeah, and the teacher doesn't necessarily have to be terrified. She could be sitting there going, oh, God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, not again. Like, yeah, I'm not scared of this thing, but, man, he's a big, clumsy mess in the classroom. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could have knocked over all this stuff and knocked over some desks and whatever. <laughs> like you know, I'm mean, afraid of him. He's just, he's just a menace, you know? Yeah. So I like the idea. I think I would just add probably some component yeah. like that. Okay. Because I'm always thinking about the text and going, okay, well, he comes in and he entertains everybody and he's Michigan J alligator. Um, mm -hmm. Then why wouldn't I want him around? Cause I'd be like, that's awesome. You know what I mean? Like bring him in every day. <laughs> okay. What's going on here? Uh, I was thinking more like, uh, uh, like the, they swim up into class. Like I don't know. It kind of looks off here, but like, I was maybe like, they just like, uh, the kid is on top of the alligator and like they come into class and the teacher's like oh what the like because he came out of nowhere well sort of like sailing in on the alligator yeah and it's, it's hard like, to do visually right yeah, yeah, yeah. unless the, the classroom's at the end of it or there's a river that runs through the classroom right yeah, yeah that's true but again you know i don't really think you shouldn't explore those things because they sometimes they lead to something else right mm -hmm. yeah and to me, it's like, all you're doing is expending five minutes on the thing. And okay, there's an idea, you know, but maybe you do something five drawings down the line. You go, oh, wait a minute. Instead of it's coming in on water, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, okay, so this one, he's presenting him. He's coming out of the box. Yeah, he's like presenting him. And he's like coming out of the box, like, oh, like I brought the alligator. And the teacher's like, oh, oh my goodness. Like, you know, okay, I, I mean, that could work. So I'd say so far, let's go. Let's eliminate the ones. This one I don't think we can do. Mm -hmm. This one I think might work. Again, I'd probably, I might play with scale again, even, you know, cause you can really kind of go wacky with this kind of stuff. Yep. I might play with, um, again, with a tail coming out somehow. I like playing with the tail. It doesn't always work, but I just like playing with it. Okay. There's something about things coming out of a box like that that are kind of creepy. Yeah, it makes it like the which I don't think is bad. So I think this one could be um, something to play with, mm -hmm. to develop. Let's see this one. So what's he doing here? Like instead of an actual alligator, you could just come in a costume instead, if that works. Mm, gets a little too far away from the text. Okay. Mm. What's going on here? This is more like the story element, like, but it's like more basic where it's like each kid is holding up like what they brought and then at the very end it's like a, a full alligator and in this one you can see like the alligator ate the item of the third kid. Which was what? Uh, well, I was thinking like it would be like fish, but in the text it would be like rocks, but I didn't know how to portray that, so just thinking like maybe it's something else. I think if you were going to do that, something like that, I think you, I, I, it's just an idea. Mm -hmm. It's going to go out of my brain before I can even draw it, probably. Like, you know, sometimes they'll do stuff like that and they'll go, okay, everybody come up who like presented something, they'll stand there and mm -hmm. like it's a big deal, right? Yeah. I mean, maybe you could show the kids and yeah, they've got their, whatever their thing was. Mm -hmm. Like this kid's holding whatever it is. And this kid, you know, it's an opportunity also to draw dorky kids, which is fun. Mm -hmm. I used to go to McDonald's by here. Um, I found out when school let out on accident. And all the kids up here are like super dorky. They all look like stoners from the like, oh, goodness. Like they're just totally out of it because it's a small town. And they were just super fun to draw because they're just all these dorky. I mean, I was a dorky kid at that age too. I mean, everybody is. But, um, you know, maybe this kid's holding this, whatever they had, and so on. And I go through, man, my computer's really lagging. Um, so on and so forth. And then maybe this kid is sort of looking sideways up at the thing, like kind of pissed off. 
because to your point, whatever it was she had, was eaten. he's got in his mouth. Yeah. And, you know, and he would look like sheepish about it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was kind of like the thing I was trying to go for, but this is better. You know, you could do that thing where they do the smile, where they're like, when you when you turn that when you turn the eyebrows up this way, and then the mouth's oh, open yeah. a little bit, Maybe it's that like, like sorry, you know what I mean? Also shrugging too, yeah. Yeah, and like, yeah, exactly. That's a great idea. You know, and then he could have his hands like this, like bring his shoulders way up. You know, and then whatever's hanging out of his mouth is whatever that kid had. Yeah. I like that idea. That sounds good. Of course, my computer's lagging like crazy, which is super cool. Yeah, so you'd be like, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, I like that idea. Hey, what's this guy doing? Uh, I was, it was sort of like the previous one, but more like he's like digging through his stuff, and then like it, he would toss things out and like it'd be part of like the line with like all sticks and stones and maybe I could add some like the Easter eggs we're talking about and like in the corner off as he's throwing it out and then he pulls up the alligator that uh, so he's going through all the stuff that he might want to take and he pulls out the alligator right yeah there's something to that I mean you, that could be actually just a fun look some things in a children's book this ain't Shakespeare right mm -hmm. some things can just be visually funny okay right or visually bam you know what I mean mm -hmm. Um, there was some book, it's a famous book. I see it every now and then it's, it's something to do with a steam shovel. And there was an illustration in that thing where you open it up and that steam shovel was blowing smoke or something. It's a famous book. I can't remember the name of it. I don't know why. It, I was Mike it. Mulligan and his steam shovel. I think that's it. Yeah. And there was this scene in there where I can't remember what it was, but I, and I think there's a word in it that they use to express the stuff coming out of it or whatever. And for some reason, I just thought that image and that word were hilarious when I was a kid. Like every time I saw it, I just thought it was hilarious, right? Okay. And I like this big illustrator. Right? The foreground is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Now what I might have to have the page before, which doesn't matter because there would be a page before, I could have the kid on his knees from the back view going through all the stuff, throwing things out behind him, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I'm going, eh, not that, nope, not that, nope, not that. Then the next page, this, and that's yeah. Right. This is perfect, you know. Mm -hmm. And then it's nice too because you open that page and it's a big wow factor because it's like small thing. He's going through stuff. He's throwing stuff. Then you open the page, real big image, you know. Maybe like the whole two pages is just him bringing it out. Yeah, the, um, Peter DeSav did one in that Duchess of Whimsy book when she eats the. Um, when she eats the, the grilled cheese sandwich, he did this really spectacular page of her like floating and smiling because she loves a grilled cheese sandwich so much. Mm. And it's just a spectacular two page spread, you know? Yeah, yeah. Big two payoff, page spread. You know? What's he doing? Bouncing on him? Yeah, I mean, this was like, uh, like this would be like the bringing stuff in, but then all the kids get distracted and they're lining up to like jump on the alligator. Instead. That's kind of that idea we were talking about earlier. That could work. I think you have some stronger ones, though. Yeah. So I'm going to eliminate that one. And then what's he doing here? Uh, this was like uh, a different take where it's like of the previous one, it's like, oh, like this kid brings the stick, this <coughs> kid brings the stone, this brings the bird nest, and then it basically just like, what's ah, It's a giant alligator on top of like a, a, like a table. And you got stronger yeah. What's he doing here? Uh, so I was thinking of like, oh, like all the like the things that the kids brought are piled on like in the center, but then like out of nowhere, like the alligator just puffs out of it and like shoots out all like the stuff, like in every direction, and all the kids are like, whoa, because they didn't expect an alligator to be in, within the thing. Got stronger ones. One thing though about that that sparks my head is like, what if he, you know, it's an alligator. It's a powerful thing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if he's coming in, he's very unaware of himself. He might be kind of showing off. He might grab the teacher's chair, and, you know, hey, put it over his head or whatever. Oh, no. he's like terrified or like starts benching the, the class. Yeah, just weird crap that he has no concept of, like, this is in, inappropriate behavior. <laughs> okay, what's this one? 
And I was thinking like, oh, as the kids are bring bring their stuff in, like out of nowhere, like from the ceiling, to like the alligator and the kid breaks through like on like a rope. And, like, oh, like, the old, like the old ninja thing. Like a, like a spy movie kind of thing where like yeah, they yeah. come through the rope. And the kind of a little bit of a different twist take or a different story a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I get it. And again, I want you guys to go down these blind alleys. It's You have to. Mm -hmm. Like every idea you're going to do is not a winner. It's just, I don't care who you are. Okay? Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're the biggest children's book genius in the world. Marie Sendak, whoever. Uh, Okay. What's he doing here? Uh, This was uh, more like um, he's basically just a kid on top of the uh, the tail and he just he brings in an alligator as if it's like a gift to the class was, where was this in your process chronologically uh this was like probably towards like the middle back part okay because like it's when i was like starting like okay i, I can't it's i'm not sure what to add yeah that's kind of my point because i'm starting to go okay here's where you're you're starting to go, I'm not sure where I'm going anymore. It's like, uh, what, what, what can I else can I put in this? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, we all do that. You know, we get to a point where, like, man, it's just, and what drives me crazy is you go, man, I just don't have any ideas with this thing anymore. You know, you're working on it for two days or something. And then you're like, there's just no more ideas here. And then you talk to somebody. This is why it's good to have people, you know, professionals yeah. around you or whatever. And you talk to them and you go, man, I just don't, have, I'm running out of ideas for this thing. And they'll come in, they'll go, you can do this you can do that and they're all great ideas and they come up like 20 of them right off the top of their head and you're like mm-hmm. how did i not think of these things and it's because it's just how it works you know what i mean yeah, you just got to refill your brain with yes. more ideas you sometimes have to one thing i've learned over the years is that you get into that creative mo- or burst right mm-hmm. I, I used to the, the way i used to always think of it is like when we did brainstorms i would never tell me i would never schedule a brainstorm I would walk out to my team. I'm not told you guys this. I'd walk out to my team. I'd have a couple sketches, and I go, "Hey guys, this is what I'm thinking for the for the fall line." And they'd go, "Well, oh, that's cool." Or they start commenting on it, right? That sucks, you know. You got to do this. Or, I don't know. And I go, and anyway, I get them talking, and then I go, <clears throat> "Grab something to draw on, and let's go to the war room." I, and I had a foam core board there, and every time somebody came with an idea, I go draw it, and they draw it, tear it off, stick it on the board if it was a good idea, and. Um, and, but you had to know what people do is they try to milk that for too long. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they got everybody in there three hours later and everybody's like, I don't have any more ideas, man. And you got to just feel the room and go, okay, everybody's sort of spent out of cool ideas. Right. Yeah. Okay, guys, that's it. It's usually like an hour, hour and a half. Everybody's having a blast. But as soon as it starts to wane, you got to stop it. Okay. Because mm-hmm. otherwise the next time you go, Hey, let's go in the war room. Like, oh, God, man, we're going to be in there for like three hours. I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? If it's fun, then people are going to keep giving me ideas. And that's, what, again, what I'm saying. Start these things as early in the process as you possibly can so you've got time to get away from it, right? Mm-hmm. What's he doing here? Uh, <laughs> uh, this is like pretty much the last one, I think. And it was basically just... Uh, He's getting dragged by the alligator, by the leash, like, as they're going to school. Instead. I tend to, um, if I'm going to do this kind of thing, I don't know why this idea of leashes comes up. Um, like if he was taking this alligator to school, um, uh, you know, in that dog-like way, I would probably have the kid... really getting yanked i'd have his feet going up and digging into the ground and then the alligator this big alligator you know sort of pulling you ever seen dogs do that they're all excited and they're like pulling somebody forward mm-hmm. and i like the idea of digging their feet in and you know getting dragged down the street like that right mm-hmm. And then I have this guy caught, you know, this, this juxtaposition of this really small kid, this giant thing, the kid tilted, got his heels dug in. He's trying to control this thing. And that's a fun visual, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't have a problem with that. Um, you know, and then I would put some nod to like, 
they're going to the bus stop. So here's the bus stop. You know, maybe see the bench over here or something, whatever, and a curb. You know, and the kid could be taking them. You know, that's how he's getting to school, obviously, right? If I put the bus stop image in, or a sign in there, you know where they're going, right? Yeah. So that could work, okay? What's this one? Uh, more like, uh, like, as the kids bring in their, like, uh, on the left, the kids bring out their, like, their normal stuff. Uh, the kid with the alligator comes in, and then the teacher, like, jumps up onto her, the desk and is, like, kind of, like, shaking because it's, like, the alligator. A little too complicated, visually. Yeah, that's too, yeah, there's not enough to picture that. What's he doing, licking the teacher? Yep. Like, like a dog? Like, yeah, like a dog. More like. That's kind of fun. I like that. What's going on here? It's a top view? Yeah, and it would be like the kids are crowding around while like the kid is like trying to walk the alligator to into the classroom. Again, if you're going to do that walking thing, I think it's got to be an extreme yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, for sure. But I like a top view. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And there's the shrugged shoulders thing. Mm -hmm. There's that one. There's that one. There's that one. What's this one? Uh, wait. So as the kid, uh, uh, the kid brings the alligator, and then uh, he's being scolded by the teacher, and then does this, and the other kid in class like comes across the box and does the alligator holding like leaves on top of his head to try to hide himself, and then like gets noticed by the kid. Too too complicated. Okay. Right. Yeah. I think your strong ones are these ones we talked about. There's something here. There's something there. Can't remember what I said about that one. Oh, uh, potentially picking up teacher. You probably have stronger ideas. Um, there might be something to that one. There could be something to that one in the way we talked about it, right? Mm -hmm. And that one. What's this one? Uh, it was more like uh, the teacher is around her desk is all the other stuff from the other students. And then you could see like the alligators like have, having to bend over because like the classroom's too small. And Yeah, like, I, like, I like like it when you play with the scale thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you got stronger ones. That one. What's he doing here? Uh, this would be like instead of the alligator scaring the kids, like the kids are like, trying to chase the alligator while he's like trying to run away from the kids. Yeah, it's sort of a little bit of a different story, but I get that. I, I think there's something to that idea mm -hmm. that he's not the intimidating thing that all the kids are. Yeah. I don't like that. I like that as an idea. Okay. okay. What's he doing here? Uh, this would be like, uh, he got kicked out of class for bringing the alligator and you can see like the kid and the alligator are doing the same like pose where they're like, sitting down with like their hands on their face but then the only, the, thing alligator. Have to, the only thing here now is that i have to know why what's going on hmm. right does that make sense uh yeah maybe the text of like the the p the storyline text maybe it could show that because it's like oh but not an alligator and then well it could also that. show it like if you have a trope where you've been like this or like when i was a kid there was a hallway between the two sides of the school. So there was a, uh, like, let's say you were in third grade. There was a third 3A class and a 3B class there across the hall. And whenever you get in trouble, um, uh, like with me, they'd go, Mike, take your chair or take your desk and go out in the hallway. And I'd have to sit out in the hallway. And it's like they were throwing you to the wolves because she knew that the principal was going to walk down the hallway. And then the principal <laughs> Why are you sitting in the hallway? Because they knew why you were sitting in the hallway. Yeah. So like for me, and this isn't universal, but if you showed the kid's desk in the hallway, from my experience, I'd go, oh, he got busted. He got thrown out of class, right? Mm -hmm. And I know that's not universal. What is universal is standing in the corner, uh, standing in the corner with a dunce hat on. Uh, you know, any of those things that tell you you got in trouble and you got banished. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So it has to be universal. So people immediately know, like the teacher goes, get out of here with that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What's this one? Uh, I would say that, um, 
what was this one? Uh, so it's just, uh, there's a bag of stuff, but instead of like the kids looking through the bag, they're like turning their attention to like the kid riding the alligator and coming into class. <coughs> Could just be a fun visual, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, he's kind of kicking all the ass with his cool thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Which would be the whole goal probably when you were a kid. At least it would have been for me. Okay. All right. So you know the ones we just said that are cool, right? Yep. So those are ones I want you to iterate on. Okay? Okay. Yeah? Yep. And again, um, as soon as um, – by tomorrow, I'll have the video of this class up. So anything, you know, you need to yeah. know, it'll be up. The only thing that holds me up on that is that it takes – Zoom has to render, which doesn't take too long. Then, um, then I take it into Premiere and I edit in Premiere, and then Premiere has to render, and then I upload it to YouTube, and then you know it takes two hours to upload to YouTube alone, right? Yeah, it's just kind of pain. I mean, it's it's. Ooh, let's keep that. Oops. Okay. What do we got in chat? Anything? Okay. All right. Did I put an open discussion up yet? On uh, Canvas? Uh, I think you did. Yeah, I think you, you have one in there. Because I like it when uh, you guys are talking to each other, you know. Just be aware I can see it, obviously. So I've had people spit some, you know, do weird stuff in there. I'm like, you guys know I'm right here, right? I can see this. Okay. Um, Brianna. Where you at? Right here. Can you hear me? Yeah. So what are we thinking with one? With one, it's like how it's reading, um, like you, our teacher wants us to go out into nature, so it's just a bunch of nature, like bugs, snails, and then the tail is kind of leading into the next page where the kid is like dragging an alligator to like the front steps of like the school and the teacher's standing out there like, oh, okay. I think it's not making enough of the statement, right? Mm. With the text, what's this two? Two, um, they're like all in a circle um, with like the alligator in front of the class and the kid with the alligator is like, and love, like loves the alligator. Like I brought it here to show you guys and the teacher is like kind of shocked and her papers are flying everywhere. Okay, you could do that. Okay, what's three? Three, um, I tried to play with like some weird perspective. So it's like you're really close to like the head of the alligator and the kid is sitting on the tail looking down at the rest of the class in a circle and the teacher is like kind of shocked. You can, can't really see it. I kind of get but, it. Yeah. But this is a good example. Like, so I'm looking down and I'm not gonna get too much into drawing yet because right now I just want ideas, okay? And I don't want to get you guys all hung up on like, Oh, I gotta make a great drawing. It's like that'll just slow you down, slow your thinking down. And I like and I like the drawings here anyway. But um, so we're looking down this way, right? Yes. So this comes into like what we were talking about last week with construct. And and you're not this far along yet, so don't worry about this. I just like to use it as an example when it comes up. So if I'm doing. This down shot, then I again, if I know how this thing's constructed, is I'm going to see more of his head this way, and then you know I could push him a little more this way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You know, and he has those things on his back, whatever his hands are doing. And then this is going to do this kind of thing. So you got these weird, crazy, crooked mouths. You know, and then the kid, same thing. If he's down here, 
Well, I'm going to see the back of his head anyway. But I might, in this case, I might give the kid a hat or something, just give it some more um, yeah. visual something, you know what I mean? Instead of just hair. I mean, it could just be hair. That's fine. And I'd probably, I, you know, with boys especially, sometimes I'll draw them with the big ears because kids don't have mm -hmm. big ears, you know, and the thin neck and that kind of thing, okay? But, you know, I got to really think about um, how I'm looking down at this. And since I can sort of think of these things and sort of box the ideas, and then if I want to go up higher with that, then I would just see more of the flat plane of the top of the head, right? Mm -hmm. More like that, and his eyes come across here. And I could really be looking down at it this way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. So that's why I always want to think about the construction of it. Now, I don't want to get overly like build it. I'm not saying like build everything in a box. All I'm saying is like just think about it helps me to see it like in perspective sometimes, you know, when I when I know I just know subconsciously how it's built. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, like, if I'm doing it from this perspective, get rid of this kid. Then I'm also thinking about, well, his neck meets the body, like here. I mean, they don't really have a neck, but you know what I mean, right? Yeah. So that means that, like, like if it's a kid, like here's the kid's head, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm looking down at him. That means where his neck meets his body is, I can't see it because the head's covering it. Does that make sense? So then I'm going to see a lot less of this neck because it's tucked underneath his head, right? So I'm just thinking about the forms. And if I took that kid's head and just boxed it out, and I'm not really that high up here. Like I said, his neck's going to be in here somewhere, you know, so I'm not going to see as much of it. Does that make sense? Mm. The forms are going to start blocking over each other. They're going to get foreshortened. They're going to start blocking over each other. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. But that just goes back. The only reason I'm bringing that up, that goes back to later on when you get into the idea of construction, just knowing how they're built. So you can just kind of play around with that. Now, there's also all the things you can do with illustration that I want you guys to think about, and I'll show you some illustrations here in a minute. Like we saw one at, um, there was a really cool Golden Book illustration, uh, illustration show at Fullerton, right? And a couple of students, we went, um, and, and they had a Mary Blair there. Everybody knows who Mary Blair is, right? Okay, she's amazing, right? And this amazing Mary Blair, there's two really amazing Mary Blair gouache paintings there, right? In one of them, I think she's in the kitchen, the character's in the kitchen or something, but the table is just totally flat towards a viewer, like that, right? Yeah. And one of the kids, it was one of the kids, was in, actually it might have been in this class, last term, um, she goes, goes, oh my God, I love Mary Blair and all that kind of stuff. And I go, I go, isn't that cool the way she just turned the perspective like that? And she goes, I had a teacher who told me that's totally wrong. And it's like, how, it's not wrong. It's wrong if you're telling me that's in proper perspective. And it's wrong if you're telling me I think I know perspective. And that's like, you know what I mean? Like if you're trying to make that kind of a drawing, a perspective drawing, yeah, then it would be wrong. It's not wrong when you make a stylistic choice that looks cool. Okay. So I want you guys to, to and I want to put some stuff up like around that, because I want you guys to be aware of that, that this isn't getting the ruler out all the time. Now, certain things, sure. But like, if you want to do that kind of playing with all that sort of ideas like that, and it looks cool, go for it. Okay. It's it, this, I don't want to be restricted to that type of thinking. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So I'm saying all this stuff, but at the same time, I'm going, you, you might play around with all that stuff. Okay. It's your world. Okay. What's, uh, where was I? Was I on one? I think you were on one or you're on four on the first page that you were, that you selected. I think it was the last Did I go? One. I think what was the number? 10. Oh, was it? I was on 10? I think so. Wait, check it. No, I'm on. I, I don't have a 10. Or is it the last one on that list? Oh, the one. Or just, yeah, number one. No. I should have. I should have gone through like 
I should have gone through in some coherent way. Of course, I didn't. Hang on. It's okay. I'll find it. I have a feeling it's towards the end. It's going to be the last one. Because <laughs> that's Murphy's Law. True. We'll see, we'll see. How in the hell can I know? Last one, last one. Maybe. No? Yeah, yes. it's this one. Okay. Um, okay, so what, what is this one? This Okay, this is basically your first one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, um, okay, so that's that, that's that, that's that. And what's this one? Number four is, like, they're waiting to go inside the classroom, and the kid has brought the alligator and is, like, walking next to him and looking up at the teacher before they enter the room, and the teacher is all shocked, and all the kids already inside the class are looking out through the window, like, at the alligator, and the kids, like, waiting in line to get into class. They're, like, looking at it. They're kind of leaning away, and one of them's trying to poke at it, and, like, the kid with the alligator, like, has a little hat on and, like, his little backpack with, like, a little um, sleeping bag on top. I can see it, but yeah, I can idea. see it. Let's go. Okay, so let's go coherent. Here's two. Two. Um, number one, but like a different perspective. Like, are these um, chronological? Did you go? This is the chronologically. How are you going? Uh, this is towards the end. The one that we selected first is the first one that I did. Yeah, because it's like they feel chronological. Because, and I don't know if they were or not. And I don't know I think how. It's just the flow of my thoughts while I was doing it. So yeah, but the, the, the drawing's getting clearer and better. Oh, Does that oh. make sense? Yeah. But the other ones are fine. But like this kid right here, I like that pose. It's very clear. Okay, one. What are we saying? Uh, yeah. So number one is it's like in the hallway, and the alligator's like in the backpack, and it's kind of like sagging. Um, and it's looking at the teacher and the teacher's like, oh, you can't bring that in here. But it could also like go with like the beginning of the text, like the teacher explaining what to bring, but also <laughs> um, like talking. I to like the kids. idea of the alligator in the backpack. Hmm. Again, I'd probably play a little more with the scale. Like I, actually that's, he's pretty big there and how he interacts with the backpack, obviously. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. What's going on in two? Two um, is like Lion Kinging the tiny alligator um, and it's kind of like being held up like with its arms forward and the teacher is like, oh, so you brought an alligator and all the kids are like excited and looking at it. And the kids like, behold my alligator as I stand on this box. That I like to pose a lot. And that's kind of this idea here too? Yeah, they kind of like, I actually did three first and then I did two. I numbered oh. them before I like um, yeah, it doesn't sure. matter. All we want those yeah. for so we know we can reference about. them while we're talking. Yeah, and I want What's, to do one without glasses, which is why I did number two. Yeah, that's interesting. What's, um, when you, yeah, so what, okay, so what's going on four? Four, um, I had like the idea of like, oh, a teacher wants you to put like your um, show and tell thing on your desk. So he's trying to fit the whole alligator on top of his desk, and the teacher's like, oh, what? what's happening here? It's like hard to explain. Hmm? It's hard to explain. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because <clears throat> I don't know that. I just know he's all bunched up on the table. And I'm like, why is he all bunched up on the table, right? Yeah. So let's go. Okay, that's two, three. Well, you got a lot of them. How many pages do you do? Um, you said five front and back. So this is five pages front and Damn back. Damn it. I didn't put that on the canvas man it pisses me off all right i just um, remembered you saying that though okay what's going on here uh the bottom Hi. uh the teacher like sees like the kid walking down like the hallway riding on the back of the alligator and it's kind of like trotting kind of like like waddling i don't know you can kind of like see like one foot is up and the other one's down and he's holding like a little baton the student like the student. Okay, so this goes back to that same thing we're talking about where this kid is like, I got this amazing, I got this. Like, I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I am win, basically, right? Yeah. I think if you're doing that, then you also have to show, <laughs> like, if he's doing that, because that's what I would do. I mean, if you're a kid, yeah. right? But then you got to have the other kids sort of somehow, maybe with their stuff, like, looking at, you know, like, kind of going, oh, wow, like, yeah, this stuff sucks that I brought. You know what I mean? Or looking bummed out, or whatever it is, they've got to they've got to have that contrast between 
you know, their stuff sucks compared to that. I brought a stick and he brought an alligator. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? And then they're going sideways. This one, he's she's shoving it in. And can you guys hear me? You guys are all for up. Okay, can you guys hear me now? Uh, how about now? I can. Okay, now I can hear you. Can you hear us now? Yeah. Okay, we can hear you. We can hear okay. you. We can hear you. Yeah. My connection's been way better since they came out and put the new router in. Mm -hmm. um, okay, it looks like here she's shoving him into a uh, uh, locker. Yes. And the teacher's in the background, like, what are you doing? Well, why is she shoving him in a locker? Um, not like, well, I kind of have the idea of it being like a cubby instead, like an in class cubby. Like, I think if I was going to do something like that, because I remember when I was in, I think it was kindergarten, they had like, you know, you have the back of the room, you have the, like your own little space, like a mm. cabinet or whatever. Um, I don't know what school that was at, but anyway, you know, where the kids are going, like here's the, the cabinet thing, right? Mm -hmm. And this kid's reaching up and putting her lunchbox. This kid's reaching up and putting his whatever, his books, or taking it, you know. And then this kid's, you know, putting something normal in there. And then this one's got a big alligator stuffed in it and the girls, you know, whatever. I, right? I do have one like that. Where were we on, three? Yeah. Yeah, we were on three. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, that that if you're gonna do that, I think you need the ju uh, the juxtaposition of the other kids doing normal things. Okay. Okay. You got to really sell the story because, I mean, okay. Um. Again, this would be part of a narrative. It wouldn't exist on its own. So we have a little bit of leeway where, yeah, I mean, there is a narrative here. So this, this thing normally wouldn't have to tell the entire story, obviously, right? Yeah. It's one page spread on in, in a big story, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we can't do a whole book in class, obviously, okay? Hang on. And then once we get through this, where we get all our ideas together, then we can actually start working on the design and the drawing, okay? All right. What's she doing on two? On two, um, the student or the little girl like is in the door of the class, and there's a giant alligator behind her, and she's like just standing there, like I'm here with her um, alligator. And their teacher is supposed to be like a shadow instead of like you directly seeing the the teacher. It's like, why did you bring it? I like that idea. <laughs> what? Um, so what's the teacher doing? Flipping out? Like. It just became a blog, but um, I didn't know exactly what I wanted her to do, but I knew she, I wanted her to like either say like, what are you doing? Or, um, I like the out. image of the kid with the giant alligator. The only thing I'd say is you got to make this relate to it. If, if, if it's going to be, the, or is it something else? Is it the teacher? Mm -hmm. Is it, because I do like, and I like the sense of innocence on her face, sort of like, what? You know what I mean? Like, what? I got a big giant alligator, so what? And, and, <laughs> That, that again speaks to me that, and I don't know the rest of the story, but it speaks to me that that alligator, she loves that alligator, you mm -hmm. know? And I like that. I don't like, I don't, I'm starting to read all these um, things that are popping up probably in my feed, and they're like, I'm doing a children's book on positive self awareness or something. You're like, who the hell wants to read that book when you're eight? I mean, I don't want to read that stupid book. I want to read something that's fun. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I don't, want, I don't want to be messaged to death. At least I don't. And, and you were messaged with books when you were a kid, but the message was like, be nice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Don't judge a book by its cover. Don't be mean. You know, they were just golden <laughs> rules, basically. You know what I mean? Now they're getting very specific, which I think is odd. I think you're introducing kids to things, that, to ideas that they probably don't really necessarily need to talk about yet. 
Mm-hmm. That's just me. Okay. Yeah. And I'm also an old fart. And uh, <laughs> so my thinking is going to be a little bit different, right? <clears throat> okay. So what's this one here? That one there, um, I wanted to put in a plant. So you're really close to the plant looking at like the kid at the front of the classroom with his alligator that's looking at the rest of the class that's behind the teacher and they're all like pointing at it like, oh my gosh. And, she, and the, she's the only one that's like, there's an alligator in my classroom. I like the composition a lot. You know, I love this big dark shape here and this mass right here. I think you'd really have to get, because there is an element to me, I always say this with this thing. I mean, if I brought it, it, when I was a kid, if somebody brought an alligator in the room, all the kids would be like, yeah, they think that was mm-hmm. awesome. You know what I mean? And the teacher, obviously, would be like, what? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's a natural kid thing to not necessarily be a, f- just think it's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> so I don't know. I might try and push that a little more. Okay. So that's one I would probably work on. I, I definitely work on this one. I really like that. And I like the way the alligator is framing her, you know? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Hang on, I gotta um, yeah. take my, my participants list. This is my second one. One of these days I'll clean off my desktop. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Here he's what, in the pool? Yes. And the kid's on the back of the alligator and the teacher's like pointing at her like, I don't know. Schools schools have pools, they do, right? Some of them, yeah. I had never thought of the pool thing. That's kind of interesting. I play around with that a little bit. Okay. It's got to be outrageous. I think it's got to be visually. Like out of the water. <laughs> Sorry. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I mean, it's yeah. got to be fantastic. I think it's a children's book. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, why can't it be like just normal class? Can it be like swim class or something? It's just got to be um, fun. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The, thing, the thing I love about this stuff, I've said this before. It's your world to create. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You get to make it as... And you go, you know, go back to being a kid, you know. Um, it's just, it's fun to do that, you know. And it's fun when you get to do this, like, for a living and stuff, when you're going to work every day and you're going, I'm paid to, to come up with crazy toys and shit. It's not even like a job, you know what I mean? It's just fun, you know. It's getting in a room with a bunch of other dorks and you're coming up with cool stuff and it actually gets made, put into the world, you know. Same thing with a book, you know. And, you know, you got to also think about this, I think. When we were making toys and things like that, um, I would always tell, talk to people and go, look, you're not just making a toy, man. You're potentially creating uh, something that's important in a kid's life. It's, it's fleeting. I'm not saying it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. But, like, I, I, had, I think we all did. We had toys that were, like, super important to us and created a sense of play pattern uh, that let us dive into our imaginations, maybe with our friends and maybe even made your house feel kind of magical because you're in this sort of zone with your friends playing with these things. And it's magical. You know what I mean? It, it, things can be magical when you're kids. So every time I was talking to people, like I go, if I hear them use the word product or something like that, I go, dude, we're not making product. You know what I mean? We're trying and we're probably failing most of the time, but we're trying to make great memories for these kids and, and, and magical experiences. And then maybe that's high minded, but I don't think it is. Okay. And I sure as hell know it isn't with the children's book because people love those children's books they grew up with. Okay. They hold a certain place in their heart. You know what I mean? They read them to their kids and their kids read them to their kids and on and on and on. And if that's something you create, man, that's amazing. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that is absolutely amazing. If you get, if you hit one out of the park like that, you know, like Maurice Sendak did or Beatrix Potter did or, you know, any of these people where these things just live on. And what's interesting about Maurice Sendak, it's one of the only books that I look at and I go, if I was the publisher and he would have brought me that book, I would have went, 
get out of here with that, man. It's like way too psychological. I don't even really know what it's about. And man, he hit the sweet spot. Like that thing resonates with every generation of kids since. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I love that. I love being wrong. I love looking at something going, wow, I would have totally missed that. Like I wouldn't have published that. I would have said, mm, way too cerebral, dude. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, Maurice Sendak didn't come. He wasn't like a wacky kid guy. He didn't particularly like kids. I don't think he hated him or anything. But he wasn't a kid guy. He was a cerebral guy. And he was like, I write books for, you know, I'm not trying to shield anything from these kids or whatever. You know, whatever. But he, you know, he he hits a magical thing, you know. And I think to have something out there just keeps generating, you know. And it'll be the same thing with animated movies. Like, well, it already is. But like, if you worked on Frozen, I mean, that's a cool thing to be a part of, man. When you're 60, some kid's going to lose their mind because you're the guy that designed Olaf. You know what I mean? Like, literally some kid 50 years from now is going to lose his mind. That's cute. Over that, you know, I just think that's cool, you know. <laughs> and it's not that you get noticed for it or anything; it's just that it's out there, and you and you you did that, you know. And it, and it resonated with somebody. Okay, uh, what's going on in this one? Coming through the uh, window. Coming through the window at the kids' desk, and the teacher is, of course, freaking out about it. And some of the kids are like leaning away, and and one of them like standing up, like all white, like with his mouth open, like kind of shocked. Hmm. I think it might be a little too complicated. Okay. Okay. So that one is, what are we on? Three. And I'll get through as many of these as I can tonight. Hopefully I'll get through all of them. Because we have to go through this. I, I'm sorry, but you can't. We have to go through the idea process. We have to. Yeah. Okay. And we have to go through the thumbnail process. And I hope that if you guys haven't done this a lot, and believe it or not, um, I had a class at Art Center, and it was Richard Petrushka's class. And everybody wanted to take Petrushka's class because that's where you learn gouache, right? It was called Viscom 4, okay? <laughs> Every, you know, you can't wait to take that class, right? And Art Center, the first year, first half of your education, basically, is all foundational. So you're like, I want to do that. And they're like, no, you got to go through all your foundation, which I actually think is great. But anyway, I went into Petrushka's class, and by then, you, you know, you're thinking you're kind of understanding things, which you're not. But um, everybody's a little bit full of themselves a little bit. I really wasn't, but, you know, you know, it's normal. But um, anyway, we came into his class, and, and he goes, and he, he'd put up, you know, that wide roll paper that's like four feet wide? Yeah. And he'd ran it across the whole classroom, right? So there was a big roll of, you know, paper across the whole classroom. And he goes, get a marker. Everybody get a marker and go up and draw me a cube in perspective. And everybody's like, what the hell are you talking about, Right. And, you know, and then some people were kind of dragging their feet and he goes, I'm not starting this class until every one of you does it. Right. And then you do it and you got up there and you go, I mean, we knew how to do it, but for some reason there was a lot of people who kind of screwed up on it. And part of it's just like you're being tested and it's art center and all that. And I get it. Maybe it was nerves or whatever, but he's like, and then, and he used that to go, um, you better know your basics here, dude. Cause if you don't know your basics, forget this gouache crap. And it was a really good lesson for me. Okay. And then, and then he goes, and I used to kind of dive in, but I wouldn't do, com- I wouldn't do value comps, especially value comps. And I wasn't doing color comps. Okay. Cause I'm like, I want to get to the painting. Right. And then, so he goes, um, okay, go, you know, you need to do your, uh, whatever we're working on. He goes, you need to do your value comps. I go, I'm just going to do this. And he goes, you're not doing shit until you do those value comps and you do enough of them where you figure it out. Okay. Then I did the value comps and he tore me up. He's like, these suck, man. What are you doing? You know, and he was right. He was totally right. He's like, you are not working out your problems before you do the painting. Okay. And I go, well, it's, you know, it's going to take a long time. How could I do that professionally or whatever? And actually it's the opposite. It actually makes it go way faster. Okay. Then I did that. And then he goes, now you can do your color comps. I'm like, man, come on. You know, so you're doing these small little gouache color mm-hmm. comps. Man, did that team. And then that painting, my first gouache painting, came out pretty damn good, okay, Um, because of that process, okay? And also, I realized, like, oh, when you work everything out real small, you can do that really fast. But when you get that painting, that painting goes a lot smoother, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with this, because you've got, in this case, you've got to have a really good idea. Then we can go into, like, designing the characters and all that stuff. And the, and the room and all that. So the thing I like about it is I get to combine everything. I get to combine, I'm creating the characters in it. I'm creating the, the environment in it. 
um, so on and so forth, right? But you really need to go through it method uh, methodically. And, and one of the main things when we start to get to close to painting is that I want you guys to really understand what that drawing has to be, okay? Because I get a lot of people and they go, it goes on for a while, you know, with certain people. And they'll keep bringing me drawings and go, okay, am I ready to paint? I'm like, you're not even close. They're like, and they think it's close. And I get it. It's just experience, okay? It's just experience. But you've got to know that. Otherwise, your paintings will never work, okay? okay. Now, digitally, you can find a lot of it in the paint. It's called finding it in the paint. And, and with opaque media, I can find it in the paint. But I, that's because I've been doing it a long time. And I'm not going to do that deliberately, but I might go, yeah, that shoe's kind of funky, so I can grab some opaque paint and recarve that shape of that shoe a little bit out of my head or whatever. But like that's experience, okay? And that's opaque media. You can do that in digital too, but um, watercolor, not so much. Watercolor, you know, it's transparent, so you're not going over everything opaquely. You don't really have that finding it in the paint thing as much, okay? There's certain little places where you do, but not the same way. You can find the color a little bit in the paint and stuff like that, okay? <laughs> I just want you always, guys always to know what I'm doing because I don't know if you guys think like I did where they're going. And I wasn't full of myself at all. I was actually the opposite when I was in school. I knew I was a student. I knew I was learning and all that. But sometimes you're like, man, I don't need to do all these thumbnails. You know, it's like, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, you, you're not going to have good ideas. You've got to explore them. Okay. Definitely. One of the reasons I wanted to do this class so bad is I want to be able to bring this type of art center class. And I don't mean like, I just mean a high level class, okay? Not that it's art center or whatever, but where you can have these discussions and you can go through the process and you can really talk about story and character development and all those things that you are going to use in every class that you're gonna be in. It's a foundational skill that you find your process around your creativity. Does that make sense? And you need to do that, okay? And I'm just, you know, walking you through it. And then, you know, you're going to, again, you're going to find your way of approaching it. But I've noticed with students, because I went through the same thing, that you do have to sort of lead them through a process of, of the creative part of it. Can't make you creative. I can help you put a process around it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like all you guys are coming up with cool ideas. Okay. And, and it's really interesting to me because whenever you come up with this kind of stuff and you go, I want to do this kind of class, this pisses me off. And people will go, well, it's a city college. And I'm like, what? I don't, why does that matter? Why the hell does that matter? So you don't want to do a high level class because it's a city college? Screw that. You know what I mean? That makes no sense to me. Okay. Um, we should all be doing, you know, you guys should build it. That's bullshit. Period. Okay. Um, so anyway, we got to go through that process. Okay. That's just what I'm trying to get to. And then it'll get smoother because when we do the next project, you're going to have gone through this. We're going to go through this much faster because you'll know, okay? And you'll start developing your own way of doing it and all that kind of thing, okay? What's going on with this one here? Uh, number one? Yeah. It's, um, he's on the desk and the students, like, um, all excited for it. You have kids, like, pointing at it and, like, oogling at it. It's just this giant alligator on a desk. and the So is he a little bit freaked out by the kids? Hmm? Is he a little bit freaked out by the kids? He's a little shy. Okay, I like that, and I like the, the kids sort of prodding at him a little bit. I think mm -hmm. you got a real, and you're doing it, you're getting it, but I might like raise the, the leg up. I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> like, you know, he's sort of bunched in, you know, maybe that leg yeah. is like over a little bit. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like really push. I mean, you're getting it. You're getting that pose. Um, and I like the idea because somebody else, I don't know if it was you who it was, um, had that idea of the, of the alligator actually being afraid of the kids and turning that idea around. Hmm. Um, and I like the idea of the kid maybe, maybe just poking him with her finger or something. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I like that. That's something you can develop up a little bit. And then what's this one here? Seven or two? Two, um, they're all sitting like in their um, circle and the kids are just sitting on the alligator's tail because it's just a giant alligator and there's not enough room in the, like, the classroom. So they're just sitting on the tail, like one of them's having fun with it. Um, I like the visual one of it. One kind of fell off. The what? One kid fell off towards the end, but like off the tail. But, now yeah. again, I don't think the teacher always had, what's the teacher doing here? Um, she's kind of just startled. 
Yeah, so she, the, she could also, like, if it's just like he's kind of taking over the class a little bit, mm -hmm. which is kind of what this feels like. Yeah. It, she could also just feel a little uh, exasperated. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, uh, you know, like not freaked out, just like, oh, God, you know, I, I've lost control of this whole thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I kind of like these two. And like, you got some nice things going on um, compositionally and visually, okay? Mm hmm because these things got to be fun looking, man. At the end of the day, it's a kid's book. They got to be fun, right? Mm -hmm. And then three. He got stuck in the slide at the, on the playground, and the teacher's like, um, like, I don't know. She doesn't know what to do about this situation. While, like, this that, that sets up a scenario that I hadn't really thought of, is him getting into some mischief and getting stuck or something like that. I hadn't really thought of that. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, But it's got to be a big visual pay, uh, payoff, right? Okay. So I don't know what he gets stuck in or if it's, if, if it's, I don't know what it is, but I like that idea of him just getting into some simple mischief and, you know, that, and that she's got to deal with it or whatever. And yeah. again, she, she's just tired of it basically. Yeah. Right. What's going on here? Um, I wanted them to be all sitting in like in a circle and the, ki the kids just sitting in the lap of the um, alligator. Um, and another student also brought a live animal, but it's a chicken and the alligator I wanted the alligator to be looking at the chicken, like in the other student's lap. Because he wants to eat it? Yeah. <laughs> now you can do that slyly. You know what I mean? Yeah, because like nothing's be kind of... happened to the chicken yet. No, 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 yeah. But he could be side eyeing the chicken. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? Um, or it could, like I said, it could be the class, like hamster. Mm. Like, you know, the class, because I remember when I was a kid, there was like a, I think it was in kindergarten or something. They had like a class. I think we had a little, thing with like hamsters or something in it yeah uh, i think it was hamsters yeah my little um sister had had a class pet a hamster in um her fifth grade class and just kept it in class why don't they why don't they still do that i don't know anything about what grade school is like anymore i have no idea uh i do feel like it's a long time ago a long <laughs> time ago i was in that Okay, um, number three is the cubby one that you were... We're starting, I like this character, like the, the styling of it already, mm -hmm. in this little thing, I like that. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, we got, what is that number, this one up here? Oh, some of these are horizontal, some are vertical, Yeah, some right? of them are horizontal, some of them are vertical. Um, so if you want to do the ones that... So let's go left to right. Let's go, uh, or let's go the ones that are I can read from this angle. So let's go Okay. this one. Where's my pen? This one. And then this one. So let's okay. go here. What's going on there? So he's sitting in the cubby, looking at the teacher, um, and the little kid is like down on the like on the floor, looking up at the professor, while the rest of the kids are putting their stuff into the cubbies and also checking out the alligator as well, like point, like poking at it and like trying to get a look at it. And the teacher is like trying to be all like, well, "You can't do that," but she's also really startled by the alligator. I love this. Um, I love this drawing of this and this kid. I just really like that. It's appealing looking. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and that looks like a kid. You know, like when I'm just roughing these things out real, real, real fast. A lot of the times, I, I just again go, "That's just a little tiny adult." <laughs> you know what I mean? But that looks mm -hmm. like a kid. You know, and the and the just the way his head still just it looks like a kid, which is cool. Um, and I also, I'm li I like this thing where the alligator is framing the kid like that because you did it in the other thing too, right? Mm -hmm. There's something here, but I think, and I love this. You gotta, I think we got to, if you're going to do anything with it, you gotta, or maybe even, even if you don't do anything with this, this is starting to set like a little bit of stylistic direction if you want to go that way for later. So even if you don't use this idea, you're starting to work out some interesting design issues there. Does that make sense? Yeah. This is a top view? That is a top view. I just remember like circular like alphabet letter um, like carpets that my grade school teachers would have. And they're all like sitting in a circle to do like their sharing. And um, 
the teacher is like trying to tell the kids to get off like the alligator or something because they're all like just sitting on it and making space. This keeps like, running my it. brain. My keeps running my brain back to if you're talking about them sitting around with the kids. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I guess this would only be. I don't know. Because it is like a weird perspective thing. No, I, I don't mind that at all. I'm just mm -hmm. kind of going, what could they be doing? I, I'm always trying to go back to like, okay, the alligator could play with the kids. I love that. And the kid, mm -hmm. alligator. But then I go, well, why wouldn't I want the alligator there then? Because that get, brings me back to the part of text where it goes, you know, clearly you're not supposed to bring an alligator. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, but then I go back to like, he's too big. And he's this nice alligator. Actually, I don't want his mouth open. But, you know, could he be sitting here with his little... I like the juxtaposition of their little hands. Mm -hmm. Like when you see him in real life, they just have these little funny hands. Little you know, and he could be like having a tea party with him. <laughs> right? And yeah. then there's another kid. And they're all happy about it. But again, the payoff for me that... There's a kid here that actually be shorter. You know, he has his little legs again. So I have that juxtaposition of that. He's got his tail. And then another kid. But again, I can have everything sort of knocked over. Like he's knocked over the teapot. He's knocked over the chairs. He's knocked all this. Because that's a delicate little action. Yeah. Right? And the, and the kids could be like still digging him and like have their little tea thing and everything, but he's just mm -hmm. kind of a mess because he's too big and too clumsy. So that could just be the visual payoff where it's like he's not supposed to be here. He's too big and clumsy. He's, but there's something charming about the kids playing with him in some activity that he's yeah. just a mess with. But he's still he's still cool because he's a cool alligator. He's nice, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And then I also get the little juxtaposition, you know of the little hand things, which I, I'd want to play with. Mm. And I like the idea of the alligator being this nice alligator. <coughs> anyway, so then, you know, the pot's knocked over, coffee spilling on the floor, or the tea. And there's like a little, what do you call that, puddle you know, maybe, you know, some other stuff, whatever, you know? Yeah. Maybe there's a broken tea glass or teacup here. He's like crushed the chair. Yeah. He's probably the chair. Yeah. The chair's gone. Maybe it's sticking out here. Like he's not even sitting in it anymore. He just smashed it. Um, you know, maybe the, there's like something on the wall that was hanging on the wall. That's now crooked. You know, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, the lights hanging down from, I don't know, maybe there's a light and he's pushing the light out of the way. Just all that stuff where he's too big and he's clumsy and, you know, but I like the idea of like, he's happy because he's playing with the kids and the kids are happy because mm -hmm. he's cool, but you know, he's just kind of a mess, he's right? Big, yeah. He's just too big. So I think if he's doing an activity that could work. Okay. Where we were just on what, five? Yeah. Yeah. So this idea of an act, and I love this um, perspective stuff you're doing, this nice design stuff. And I like that you're coming up, like that idea comes out of this idea, right? The activity idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, um, it's not a huge leap to go from here to there. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you know, 90% of the time when you're working on a project, you're not working in a vacuum, you're working with other people. And they're going to do exactly what I just did. They're going to contribute their thing and, you know, whatever, and take your idea and push it further or whatever, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Which I always think is really cool. I always love that. When people, mm -hmm. you think you have a great idea and then somebody on your team goes, makes it 10 times better. You know what I mean? Or comes up with something that's 10 times better than your idea completely, you know? Um, okay, what's happening here? Here, um, going through the window and his nose is kind of like getting into the, the teacher's space. Um, his tail's also coming through the window, and then the kid is like, look at my alligator. Okay, you got better ones. Yeah? yeah? What's this one? This one, it's kind of another perspective thing, like the alligator and the kid um, 
like is hugging him. The alligator like really loves the kid and the teacher is like really far down below with all the rest of the students like, hey, like come back down from there. Like it's dangerous. I don't know. It's a nice image, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, okay, now I gotta go counterclockwise. What's going on here? Uh, the teacher walks into the classroom and it's completely destroyed like by like the alligator. There's like a bunch of um, crushed desks and tables and the students are looking inside from the outside and the other student is just having the time of her life when I'm with her alligator in the classroom. And you get stronger ones. What's happening here? They use them as slide? slide? Yeah. Oh, that's fun. I like that. Yeah, so I, might like play around. I might play around a little bit with that. Okay. I think uh, this activity I think one I think is strong that is an idea. Mm -hmm. This could be fun. And then we're on six. So this one, she's leaning on the desk. She's just exasperated here, right? Yeah. Again, it's a nice um, little visual. Mm -hmm. Same uh, thing here? Oh, she's dragging him now, right? She's dragging him in the backpack. Like on no, the floor. That's, that's a different take on it. I like that. See, now that it feels like she's pulling him. That's good, right? And I know it's early on. Normally, I don't even care, but it's it's showing that stuff. Yeah. Sometimes you get lucky, man, with a thumbnail like you're kind of doing with that one I was just talking about. You just start mm -hmm. blowing it up. You just blow it up, and you start working over it and working through it, you know, or or just as a basic starting point or whatever. Sometimes yeah. you get lucky, and it's good enough, and you can kind of um um. It, it can be your starting point. You can get really lucky, you know? Yeah. This one, they're, they're like doing a show. Yeah, they're doing a show, but the tail hit the bookcase and it's um, destroyed. In the okay, there you go. That's the, kind of that same idea, right? So that mm -hmm. could work. Because I like the idea of the show and tell, right? Oh, okay, yeah. True. That the kid would come in and go, man, I'm putting on a show, man, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, a showbiz kid, you know? <laughs> I met people like that when I was young. I mean, everybody does. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, what's this one? Uh, alligators um, eating the teacher's apple on her desk. And okay. He's trying to take it away. That's the start of an idea. What's going on here? Um, he, he is sitting, he's too big for the desk that the student is also sitting in, because the student's also like sitting in the, um, a lap of the alligator and the teacher is like, uh, okay. And then the one below that's kind of bounced off of that one where like, in fact, the teacher tripped over the alligator's tail. Oh yeah, I hadn't thought of that. And I like the tail stuff. And this is seven, okay. Um, this is the one where they're all looking in the thing and then the, it's sort of a variation on that other one, right? I made this one first. Oh. But the other one's a variation on this one then, right? Yes. So I like the other one where you zoomed in on her. Mm, okay. I like charming drawings, okay? And I yeah. like them especially in the context of kids' things. Mm -hmm. um, I love charming drawings, okay? There's, a, in, again, in that Maurice Sendak film, there's a drawing of his dog that he did that mm -hmm. makes me cry every time I see it, you know? Mm -hmm. And then the way he talks about it, it just gets to me every time I see it. Um, okay. What's going on here? Carrying them? Carrying the tiny alligator into. Oh, it's a smaller one. Okay. Man, you got some nice poses and things. You're getting like a nice sense of weight in these things. Like the ones like this. There's a nice sense of weight in that. Like the way she's leaning back like that. Uh-huh. Thank you. And you did the same thing with the one where she was pulling it. Like, you're getting a nice sense of weight. That's hard to do. I think it's hard to do. What's this one up here? Uh, oh, he's riding it? Yeah, I'm just riding it. This one, oh, she's just another one where she loves him a lot, right? Yeah, she's pulling it to the front of the classroom. Okay, bring up your um, show and tell thing and... Some of the kids are like staring and some of them are excited and her paper, the teacher is like, got up really fast. She's like, no, you can't do that. Another good thing to look at, you know, is like I have a, on my feet, I love dogs. 
Uh -huh. So on my Instagram, I have this, I have all these feeds of like silly dog stuff. And it mm -hmm. just, they do such funny stuff. It gives you like a lot of funny ideas. You know what I mean? They just do such weird stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's one <laughs> oh, this no. dog. I don't know, this girl, they've got this, the game on. And it was just something you could tell somebody was just filming because it was funny and they didn't know this was going to happen. And the, the, the announcer, it's like a football game or something. You can't see it. You can hear the announcer. Uh-huh. And he's, you know they get all riled up? He's running for the 40. He's running for the 50. Whatever it is they talk about. Yeah. And the dog is watching it. And every time the announcer, like, raises the level again, the dog's, like, losing uh -huh. his mind. And then the girl, his owner is sitting next to him, like, laughing her ass off at it. Uh, and then the dog, when he finally goes, so he does that, and the dog's like getting all excited about it every mm -hmm. time he says it. And then when he gets to the payoff and he goes, you know, touchdown or whatever it is, <laughs> the dog like leapt up in the air and like flipped over and fell off the couch, like right on time, man, because that, that announcer was just getting oh all fired up. It's such a weird video. It's that. funny, man. Mm -hmm. But like, anyway, if you're doing animal stuff, it's fun to, you know, go to the dog park, man. You go to the dog park and you sketch dog dogs beach. Dog off beach. all day long. They're funny, mm -hmm. man. Dogs are funnier than anything. Yes. Cats okay. can be funny, too. So, yeah. But cats are on this, like, mm -hmm. they're not as demonstrative like that. Uh, like, dogs just lose their mind when you come home. Oh, you know? sure. Cats are like, I don't care. You know, dogs will lose their mind when you come home. Okay. What's this one here? Carrying them in? Uh, oh, no. Um. She's just bringing him in, right? Uh, yeah, he's just bringing the alligator and putting it in the cubby, and the cubby's like kind of. Uh, oh, okay. Scary. I get it. And the teacher wasn't paying attention. She looked over her shoulder, like. Uh, I kind of like that. I like that the teacher's not overreacting, like, whoa, you know, whatever. It's just sort of like, what the hell? Like, yeah, like, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> what's going on here? Uh, alligator kind of like leaning over the kid to like greet the teacher who's like leaning back in her chair and the kid's just standing in front of the alligator okay if you can kind of see it so he's leaning into the teacher the teacher's just a little wary of it right he's like this like in yeah chair. i might have him sort of just maybe just holding out an apple for her oh so he's not being menacing but it you know it's an alligator yeah but he's sort of like congratulations <laughs> you know but you're like holy crap you know mm -hmm. Okay, I think I've gone through them. You know which ones you got to work on. Wait, did I go through this? Mm. Yeah, you went through that one. I think oh, we I missed did. one. I what? I think we missed one, maybe, towards the end. Let me see. We didn't see this one, did we? We didn't see that, right? No. Okay, so what's she doing here? Um, she's just saying, I don't know, she's just explaining, because I kind of, like, went with the text, like, her explaining what to bring, and then, like, she, at the end, like, to the Was that an page. early one? Was that an early one? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's totally normal. Like, you just go, okay, I'm just going to kind of go for the, mm -hmm. you gotta, for me, I got to find a way in. Yeah. And for the, my way in is, like, I don't care what the first, you know, thing is. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I just, I got to get something on paper. Mm -hmm. to, to start to go you know yeah uh, is this the slide idea a little bit uh no but it's just a really giant alligator in the classroom and you have like the desks being pushed back into the corner behind it you okay i love that and yeah then, i also like, love this tail are, like, poking at it and like, i love the tail cool. coming into the foreground <laughs> but i think that's another one where i might just have the teacher like going oh you know what i mean okay. yeah okay. because it's sort of He's not menacing. He's just clumsy and too big for the room. So, you know, I think I like that. I love that as a composition. Okay. Mm -hmm. But maybe I might have a couple. I might combine the one you had with the slide thing, or maybe there's two. But I mean, he's got a rocky back, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I think that's fine, actually. I mean, because he's too big for the room. I think it's fine. Okay. I just <laughs> might make the teacher a little more just more exasperated than yeah, resigned to it as opposed to freaking out, right? surprised and three um the i think kids. she could just be more resigned to it and sort of like eh, whatever okay. right yeah because uh, yeah again he's not 
freaking anybody out. And she's just, I feel like this is like the alligator's been there for a half an hour now. Yeah. And, and this whole thing's gone haywire and she's just sort of like, okay, I get it. Mm. And then what's this one? Uh, coming through the window, kid greeting and the teachers, like glasses falling off and things falling off her desk. I was like, it was unex it's unexpected. Just flipping out. Yeah, and what's and this one? What's this? Eating candy off the teacher's desk and the teacher's like kind of done with the alligator. Oh, this one up there, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think I, I got know. them all. Is there one more? Is it this one? I think, yeah, that's another, that's another one. Okay, this one, he's in the water again, right? Yeah, that's, he's not even at the school yet, but there's like the school in the background. Oh, and that's kind of like interesting. Greeting the alligator. Like, okay, let's go. I'll bring you to school. I think, I like that. I mean, I like it as an idea. I don't know if it's, like, It's not really question. strong, though. Yeah, it's not quite, I, I think there's an interesting idea there. Mm -hmm. But, um, it feels more about the moment you meet him or something. You there? Yeah, wait, what? It feels more like it's the moment where she meets him. Yes. Yeah, okay. And this is him in the classroom, right? In the classroom. Bottom two are slides. Like, one of them, okay. he's, like, doing a flip and, like, flipping over so the kid can slide down, like, its belly. And I think to push the idea, if I was going to do this kind of thing that you got here, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I might, like, the slide, to give it another level of he's not supposed to be here, <clears throat> if the kid was coming down his tail this way, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'd have the kid coming down, but then I'd have a kid who's launched. <laughs> right? uh, okay. Yeah. And they're all stoked. You know, maybe they're launching into, I don't know. Maybe the kids, I don't know. Maybe they got a pile. They put all their backpacks here and the kids are all lunching in the pack. More chaos. Right? Yeah. Because I think he'd be, I think this, as I keep thinking about this now more and more, it feels like he's just creating chaos. He's not mean or anything. He's just creating a lot of chaos because he's an alligator, right? Yeah. He's not eating anybody, except in uh, Marcus's, I think he was eating people, right? Is this another one? <laughs> he said, run him back five pages. Good. I'm not um, complaining. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's taking so long. No, don't, don't worry about that. Okay. I want to have discussion about this. If you don't do this, it's something, again, that bothers me. When I see people with um, other classes, this is part of the reason I started thinking about this. You give them an assignment, like let's say in digital drawing, everything is just by the numbers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like a superhero. It's like, really? Like, aren't you sick of that crap yet? You know? Don't you want to have a real idea? Don't you want to educate? Don't you want to illustrate something that hasn't been done a million times? You know what I mean? Don't you want to get something that really resonates with people? Like when you see a great illustration, um, you know, the great illustrators, whatever. Yeah, I mean, 90% of the time, and they might be beautifully done. And that blows your mind. But and one of the things that really blows your mind is just how great an idea it is. Like how great an idea they came up with. You know what I mean? And it's like that is just as much, it's just as important as the um, how beautiful that thing is done. Okay? Mm, yeah. All right. So what's going on with this one? Um, they have like, well, some students have like sticks and stones and whatever. And then the little girl is riding on the back of her alligator that's coming up to greet the professor who is just like looking can you hear me there you go okay. can, you, can you hear me now yeah i can hear okay. you and then what's going on this one uh they're kind of posing like as explorers i like i don't know why i like the explorer angle but i don't know why <laughs> Probably so I just like that imagery. <clears throat> What's this one? Uh, she's talking to like the student who has like her, um, her and her alligator. They're kind of like, oh, sorry. Two on her nose. Yeah, to whoever, to whatever oh. like happened. Were these earlier ones? I think so. They're all kind of out of order now. <laughs> uh, what's this one here? Um. She's carrying, like, she's carrying, like, her um, alligator like this again. 
and it's like a tiny alligator with her what's, backpack on and things. What's number one? Number one is professors on top of the cubbies while kids are putting stuff in and the alligator is just like like down there with the kids. Oh, so she freaked out and jumped up. Yeah, on she's, she's scared of the um, alligator. That's the old mouse thing in the old cartoons so where they eek and they jump up on a chair. Yeah. What's the two? Um, the alligator is like on the swing and then it like cracked and it's all bent. Like oh, I can't like, that's kind of an interesting idea. But I think again, I would probably not show it from a front view. I, I'd okay. probably turn it a little bit. Um, and then I might have a little more chaos going on again. You know, he's he okay. bent it. I don't know. I don't like know. Dust is rising. The floor is like caving in. Yeah, or it could just be you know one of the other kids is flying off the swing or oh. or whatever. I don't know, right? Okay, cool. Okay, so you know what you're doing, right? Yes. Is that everything? Huh? Let me get. Uh, okay. I'm gonna jump around a little bit here. Go for it. I think that's everything, yeah. Yeah, I think I got them. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, let's go to. We're just developing. Ebony. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Here? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's try and go. Okay, one to four, perfect. I want to go. Let's see if we can do this. Darken them up a little. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Be careful with that. <clears throat> when you do them real light like that, <clears throat> um, if I was just going to throw them out light like that, I and before, when I scan them to send them off, whatever, I darken them up like I just did. Okay, and it's just levels, okay. right? But try and get used to making them punchy when you're drawing okay. them, right? Okay. So what's going on here? So on this one, he's just riding in. You know how kids like to play dress up. He's riding in like he's a cowboy in the lunch line, and all oh, the okay. lunches are getting distracted. I like that. So he's taking it a step further, right? Yeah. What happened here? Hang on. There we go. Oh, he's jumping through a hoop? Yeah. Flaming hoop? hoop. Mm -hmm. Again, I think you got to... Um, because like if he's doing that in a classroom, it's totally inappropriate, which makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. And again, you might have a little bit of chaos around the classroom that he's you know, made a mess and all that kind of stuff. But there's something fun about that image because you could really go nuts with that, right? What's your major? Ebony? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. What is it? Animation. Oh, animation, okay. So what's good about it, yeah. like if you're doing animation, obviously story, that's what we're, you know, focused on right now. But also this thumbnailing idea, and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going into this, like just roughing these things out. Right now I'm just trying to get through story, but I'll get into that stuff a little more later. Um, the stuff that I'll tell you about, like roughing these things out and roughing them out for storyboards or uh, uh, thumbnails like this totally applies to animation because you need to be able to rough those things out quick pose them quick and all that kind of thing okay yeah so to all apply back to that that's kind of the point okay what's mm -hmm. going on here so for this one the alligator sitting underneath the kid's desk and the teacher's walking through kind of not paying attention she's stepping on his tail okay different point of view and then they're all reading oh there he is is that him there reading the book yeah there's something kind of interesting in that. So he's just another one in the classroom kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. He's trying to like blend in. 
Again, I think you got to have that juxtaposition of size in there, right? Mm -hmm. Like he ain't, he ain't fitting in at all, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Did you hear what I just said? Can we? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just making a really big alligator in this one, really play it up. I've got a, um, I was just talking to my girlfriend about this, or I don't think it was in this classroom. Anyway, I got a, uh, I started a little garden out on the deck, right? And this, there was this plant that's out there that we didn't know what it was. I don't know where it came from, right? And I go, so anyway, I've been watering it with all the other plants and everything. And now it's like, it's like four feet tall, right? And then I'm driving down the street. So I've been taking care of this plant for like all summer, right? And I was telling my girlfriend, I go, I think that's a weed. And she goes, no, I don't, I don't think it's a weed or whatever. And then, now this, and then I was driving down the street the other day and I go, I see a whole bunch of those weeds on the side of the road and it's that same weed. And only now it's like four feet tall. <laughs> and I and I go, my girlfriend goes, ah, well, you know, whatever, just don't water it. And now I feel bad. And and, and in my head, I always think like this whole time he's been like going, ah, this is really cool, man. I'm like part of a garden. Like nobody ever makes a weed part of a garden. You know what I mean? And then he's like always thinking like, man, nobody doesn't figure out I'm a weed. You know what I mean? And now I figured it out. And then like now I feel I don't want to get rid of it now. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's just it's interesting how these things just how you anthropomorphize things and. And I, had, and I was telling my girlfriend, that's why we were talking about this. I go, I can, I could come up with five children's book stories every day because everything sparks that kind of thinking with me. Okay. And I think if you open your mind up, I think a lot of people can access that kind of thing. And a lot of you probably do. Okay. But like almost everything sparks some story in my head or something. Okay. And, um, and part of that is like, and I still do this, but I used to do it a lot when I was working. Um, Somebody would send me a text and then I do a, a doodle, I take a picture of it and I'd send back the drawing to answer the text, right? Um, so like, I don't know, let's say something about their cat, let's say. And then I draw a picture of their cat in some crazy outfit jumping through, doing something, right, that, that related to what we said. And then they'd kind of go along with it and then they'd say something. And then after, by the end of this like 15, 20 minute interaction, I'd have a little mini comic strip. You know what I mean? Because then I'd answer the next thing with another drawing. And then I'd, whatever. You know what I mean? And it's just because I love to take, you know, your art skills also. I love taking that stuff and putting it in service to something, into a story or whatever. I just love doing it. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be a whole story. It could yeah. be a poster, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, I love going down the narrative rabbit hole. I just love doing that, right? So, like, think about that stuff. You know what I mean? It's like you get your drawing skills really good. And um, I used to draw this thing for a, a girl that worked for me, okay? And, um, I don't think I ever said this in here. And she had, her, she, she was this real, uh, not emotional in a bad way, but like just probably 20, 21, really cool kid, really talented designer. And she, would, uh, she had this dog named Marvel. And, um, and she, she came in one day and she goes, man, I feel bad every time when I leave the house because Marvel gets super bummed. And then I started ribbing her every day and I'd go, um, you know, Marvel's probably like close to suicide by now. You know, you, you know, Marvel's probably, you know, I say all this stuff to bum her out. And she'd go, no, I don't know, you know, it's all weird. So then I started doing this little thing because I would always do these comic strips or just silly things when I work, you know, when I work with people. And I started doing this one called Existential Marvel. And it would just be like Marvel, I draw a dog, and then it would be like a thought bubble and it said, um, is this all there is? And then the next one would say, I'm all alone in the world or something like that, right? And I'd leave it on her desk, right? And, and she'd get all bummed out about it. And it just kept going down the stupid, and then, there was, and then it went on and on and on and on and on. And all these, like, <laughs> I had these things somewhere, like a lot of them have them. Um, and it was just, you know, it was fun, but it also is flexing your creative muscles, really. You know what I mean? It just lets yourself yeah. go down that rabbit hole, man, that narrative rabbit hole, wherever it comes from came from a weed in my garden you know what i mean it can come from anywhere you know yeah not from anywhere okay just make sure it's like somebody said all you're doing is you got your antenna up right and once in a while you're lucky and you catch things and that's all it is right and it's the same thing with this creative stuff when you're doing this you got to just open your brain up put your antenna up and 
kind of go with it, you know. I don't think you can force it. At least I can. I can't force it. I just got to get down there and start drawing, mm -hmm. and then things happen. You know what I mean? Anyway, so this one, I think it might be. Um, you know, he's got to be bigger. He's got to be really conspicuous. Like he could be doing that. You always see it in old movies and cartoons where the guy's trying to be inconspicuous and he's tripping, he's tailing somebody. And he's like in the, what do you call it? He's in the, um, he's in the bus stop station, you know, following this guy and he's like reading the newspaper and then you see him go and like, look, you know, look around. It's like that kind of thing. You know, he's at the big newspaper and then he pulls it down, you know, totally obvious. Um, so he could be like, you know, and I like to do the, um, I always like to do the side eye just because I think it's funny. So if he's looking over sideways, you know, he's got the little alligator hands. It's too big. You know, but it's got to be very obvious that he's sort of doing that like, he's noticing right okay because i love i actually yeah. love this this the kids repeating but i'd really trick the kids out too later not now um mm -hmm. and and kind of get those fun archetypal kids in there where one's like dorky looking you know kids are funny they're dorky looking right dorky yeah. looking and you know funny express, whatever you know and so they're so they're very individual okay does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah have you taken French class yet, animation? Um, no, I haven't taken that one yet. Yeah, you got to do that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know who Frank is, right? Yeah, I've had him before. Oh, good. Okay. Okay, so there's that one. Oh no, wait. Yeah, there's that one there. Okay. Look, levels. If I get used to drawing punchy, right? That, and I'll show you more about that, actually. As soon as we can get through this first round, we'll speed up, okay? Yeah, okay. And I'll get more into like that kind of technical stuff, okay? Okay. I think these are reading pretty good. I just think they need to be a little darker. Damn it. Hang on. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Oh, that's one. I have two screens here, so sometimes I'm trying to do something that's actually got something. You know how that pops up and it goes, do you want to put that at? Whatever, it asks you some question before it saves it. It's not on this side, so I don't realize it's doing it. Anyway, that's what happens. Um, do you got a propeller hat? Yeah, he does. Where, where did you think of that from? Um, Just, I like to watch a lot of like old 50s and 60s shows. So like, it's like really Dennis the Menace. What about Cecil and Beanie? That one I haven't seen. That's so weird. I didn't bring this up in here, right? The the propeller hat thing. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, no, you haven't. Um, um, there used to be this show called Cecil and Beanie. It's a weird show. It was a cartoon show. I think it was. Oh no, it was. Anyway, there was that one, and I think he had a propeller hat in that one. And um, I was just talking about this to my class, um, my other class, and. Um, then there was this serial, one was called Quisp. It was, they were both together, and one was called Quisp, and one was called Quake. And Quisp was like an alien, and Quake, I don't know what the hell Quake was. I think it was like, I don't know what he was. But um, anyway, Quisp, I think, had a propeller hat on, or had a propeller hat. I don't know why I was thinking about this the other day. And uh, anyway, so you could, you could, you, you know, you could get a toy inside the box, but sometimes they'd have a thing where you tore off the box tops and you sent in the box tops and you got something way cooler. And I got a plastic um, Quisp um, propeller hat, but it was super cool because it had batteries in it and the propeller <laughs> spun real fast because it had batteries in it. And I've always been bummed I lost that hat, you know, because it was, it was cool. You know, I think I found it like on eBay or something. It's like, it's really not cool, very cool, but it was super cool then. You know? <laughs> But anyway, it's just weird you put a propeller hat on. Um, okay, so they're going to school? Yeah. Okay, I like the other one. That's going to scan me on. Okay, what's this one? Halloween? Some, yeah, it's Halloween themed. Now, why is it's it Halloween? Like a Halloween dance. 
I don't know why it's Halloween themed. I just, it's yeah, just I don't know. It excuse hole. me. Yeah. What's he doing there? Sleeping on the teacher's desk. Oh, you fell asleep? Mm -hmm. I think, you know what you'd have to do if you did that? I don't know. Because I think it has to be, um, I think he has to probably be sleeping like a dog or something. Mm -hmm. You know, dogs will fall asleep on their back and they're like all splayed out. You know what I mean? Yeah. They really curl Bring up more interest to the pose. Yeah, I think you got to get it more puppy like or something like a puppy that fell asleep, even though he's big mm -hmm. and all that. Oh, that's kind of thought of that. That's kind of interesting. Oh, that's what we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's kind of interesting. I don't even know if you need to put dunce on it. God, that sucks. I used to do that. Um, talk about <laughs> humiliating. Um, I think it might just be the pointy hat, maybe. Mm -hmm. I think I, I can play around with that a little bit. Like, see what you can do with okay. it. Okay. Okay. Play around with that one. I might play around a little bit with that one. That one's probably a little too on the nose. Um, might play around with that a little bit and see what I could do. Mm -hmm. For sure, I'd play with four. That's probably my favorite so far. What happened? Oh, So they're showing up at school here? Yeah, and then she's like confused. Yeah, probably a little too on the nose. What's he doing here? Oh, this is, she's talking about- Well, that one's more like a literal translation of the text. Was that an early one? Uh, I did them in order of like how you're seeing them, so that's like the 10th idea. Oh, okay. I think my brain was probably getting tired. I probably took a nap at this point. Uh -huh. That's sometimes, you, like I said, get them started early and then you can walk away from them sometimes, okay? Because mm -hmm. nobody's just on fire for five hours or whatever, usually, anyway. Yeah. What's going on here? Uh, they're doing like a water aerobics class. <laughs> Why should he not be there? I don't know. I guess this makes the most sense for him to be out of all the situations. I mean, if you had a bunch of kids who, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, like there's, there is something, because somebody else did that thing with the water. There is something there with the water. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's an alligator water, obviously. Um, there's something there. I just don't know what it is yet. Mm -hmm. Now, what's he doing here? You freeze? Uh, the Knievel style. So, oh, okay. What'd you say? Evil Knievel? Yeah. What, you guys know that guy? Yeah. That dude was crazy, man. He was crazy, that guy. Go on YouTube and find the slow motion footage of Evil Knievel eating it at um, Caesar's Palace. You won't be able to watch it. It's just so, so super disturbing. And he broke like a bunch of bones and, and they show it in slow motion, it's just horrible. Okay. What's going on here? Is he driving to school? Yeah. Oh, he's driving him and the kid to school? Yeah. That's kind of funny. You know what I might do though? And I don't mm -hmm. know if it'll work, let's see. Uh oh, my computer's freaking out. Just stupid things all over. Okay. I might, and I don't know if it'll work. If he if he's driving the car. Again, I might play with that juxtaposition of a uh, size. So I might have him driving. Again, he's got the little hands. And I might have his head sticking out of the, um, what do you call that, the sunroof? 
Because mm-hmm. he's too big, right? Yeah, like a Mr. Incredibles moment. Oh, did he do that? Yeah, like he's too big to fit inside the car, so he's like hunched over, head on yeah, the Yeah, yeah, he's seat. always, yeah. But he doesn't stick his head out, does he? Yeah, no. Just got to make sure that his reading is a sunroof. That's the only trick. And the kid's mm-hmm. back here. You know, and maybe it's not a forward shot. Maybe it's a side shot. You know, where his head's sticking out of here. And again, the little hands down here. I like the idea that I can make the steering wheel real small and the hands real small and then him sticking his head up through the thing. Mm-hmm. And then maybe, no, I put one hand on here and I'd have the other one hanging out the window. You know, guys hang your hand out the window like that? Yeah. I'd do that. I'd have this one hanging out all normal. And then one, you know, so it's all normal to him. Right? Mm-hmm. So forth. Okay. Jesus, nine. How late do we go? What is that? How late do we go? It's already nine. At uh, 10.30, I think. Do we go? Let me check. Usually we go a little bit short. Um, oh no, we haven't made it to 10.30 yet. I thought it was 9.45. Oh, 9.45. Is okay. it? Yeah. So I'll get through as many as I can. I'll finish them off on Thursday. Um, and we haven't had a break, so I might let you guys go a little bit early because we haven't had any break. What's going on here? Um, they're playing in a water fountain at school. Yeah, again, it's got to probably get a little, way more chaotic if you're going to mm-hmm. do that, right? Yeah. I think you got some other ones that are stronger anyway. Why is he parachuting in? Uh, I don't know. I guess to make like an entrance to show and tell. Just kind of oh, kind of got silly with it. I want you to go. I mean, it's a kid's book. You can go nuts. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, he's popping out of the cake. Mm-hmm. If he's popping out of the cake, man, it's got to be like, Ta-da! he's got to be coming out with the arms up and all that. Mm-hmm. That's kind of funny, though. That could be a fun image. You know? Mm-hmm. Especially. Lots of bright when, colors and stuff. Yeah, and it could just be. I, I like the idea of. God damn it, this thing keeps going. Like this. I don't know. Every time I save it, it jumps over the other screen. I like the idea of. You know, the cake. All this stuff's politically incorrect now, though, right? Isn't it? I mean, the cakes used to always be like strippers and stuff, didn't they? Yeah, that's what I was thinking when I was doing it, but I was like, that's, that's maybe nobody would think about it. it. But that's what's funny about it. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I always think about, like, in Singing in the Rain with the cake that happens, but it's like it's like a lot more innocent in that. Yeah, and also, I don't know that it was necessarily always that. I mean, it was probably, who knows, it's probably some, like, vaudeville thing or something, you know? Yeah. So I don't think it was always that. I, for some reason, it got defined. Anyway, you know, you can have him snout up, mouth open, arms up. You know, everything, you know, they bust open. There's, like, paper right here. Mm-hmm. All stoked. Big hands. See, this is the kind of thing, if you're an animator, it's good for you because you got to push those poses. You got to squash and stretch, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And man, you got to, well, I'm going to really want you to push your poses and all that kind of stuff, okay? They got to be, um, they can't be timid, okay? I'll show you that stuff when we get to it, though. That's kind of funny. I like that. I like that idea. I developed that one up. I tried different. Um, that one probably is a frontal thing. Mm-hmm. Um, just see what you can do to kind of offset the idea of it being too symmetrical or anything like that, okay? Okay. And this one, he's just hatched, right? Mm-hmm. That starts to take me down a different story path, right? Okay, so I went through them all, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you know which ones you're working on, right? Yeah. I'm not going to expect anything from anybody I've talked to on 
uh, Wednesday because, you know, everybody's got to catch up, okay? So you can work on them and stuff like that, but I want to get through everybody's stuff so we can get past this, okay? Okay. But I would start working on them. Yeah. For sure. Where's, is Jesse in here? Yeah, I'm here. You still in Cleveland? Yes, I am. That's interesting. I just got back from the desert. Where in the desert did you go? To Joshua Tree? Uh, no, um, out, uh, not, I don't know, like 15 minutes from Palm Springs. Oh, right on. Yeah, we found this like really cool hotel, a super cool hotel there, like a little boutique hotel. Mm hmm Really cool place, man. Like they don't hassle you at all. Oh, the desert is lawless. <laughs> I know. I love it. I love that. Yeah, that's where my dad lives, and it's definitely lawless. <laughs> I went outside the thing and there's a neighborhood across the street and there was a guy last night, like, I don't know, probably 10 or 11 at night, some guy, he was sitting on the roof and he's screaming at the moon. <laughs> <laughs> he's like cussing and screaming. Then he saw me and then he's like, what? What are you doing? And he started yelling at me and stuff. It's funny. Oh, that sounds like the desert. It's definitely would be a good place to draw people. That's why I always go out there. I love the desert, man. So this awesome. Did you cool. do any really cool. Okay, cool. All right. Oops. Okay. Let me close this one. I think you might have actually closed my folder before all of it uploaded. Did you get all? I think I had 14. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Hang on. Now, this one says 12, 14. I just want to clear those out. So I have one. All right, let's just go through them here. Because I feel like my first few were a lot stronger than some of these ones that I did digitally. So I downloaded it ahead of time? Is mm -hmm. that what I did? I think it, yeah, it was still loading. So I opened up, an, I don't want to make you do more work, but I put another folder on the Google Drive. With I'll my take a look at it like tomorrow. Okay. okay. But I'm going to go through these. Okay, so what's going on here? Here they're just putting on their show and he's kind of tripping out on them, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. I like the idea of like the little kid and the alligator, like same expression, same bow tie, same pose kind of. Yeah, very formal. Mm-hmm. Like a presentation. Yeah. Right? He's like, no, it's, it's a good alligator. It's not like the other ones. There's a horrible picture of a guy he worked at the zoo and the alligator tore his arm off. And there's this picture of the alligator sitting there with the guy's hand sticking out of his mouth. No. Yeah, it was on like, it was a couple of years ago. It was on the internet. Like, man, that's super disturbing. Anyway, um, okay. What's going on here? He took off, right? Yeah, like everybody split. Okay, I like the idea like of the papers. Of like, that's a good way of showing that. Okay, cool. I'm glad that read well. Yeah. So, but what I would do now is I would get these so they don't feel like disparate. And I know it's a thumbnail. So they lock together. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe, maybe this, and I don't know if this is, you know, maybe this, this uh, desk is here. So I get some overlap over that desk and things start to sort of lock together a little bit. Oh, okay. Because right now it's sort of, this is over here, this is over here. And then these are like, they're all feeling like little different drawings. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But right now, to be honest, I'm just worried about story or ideas. So I'm not really that worried about it. I'm always going to comment on it, but mm -hmm. I'm more concerned with story. I'm more concerned with um, ideas. Okay. Okay. Because again, if you don't have ideas, you're screwed. This is them going to school. Yeah. Need a little more of the why. He, this is not a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. this is kind of the me trying to just whip out anything I could. Um, the end. That's what you're always doing. Um, <laughs> was this an early one? No, this is more, mm, more just I'd run out of ideas and didn't have anything else really. Oh, okay. Um, I tend to go the sort of really straightforward thing when I'm probably when I'm first starting. Mm hmm. And then what's weird is I, I go towards the end, I start iterating on the same idea, but I don't realize I'm doing it. 
Yeah. That's, they start going that's like, hey, this is a really good idea. idea. This is a really cool idea. Hey, I got a bunch of ideas. And all of a sudden, I look at them an hour later, and I go, these are all the same idea. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. I never run out of ideas. Yeah. Show, right? Mm-hmm. There's a crazy video of, uh, that's, this just reminds me of it, the way he's walking, of Liberace. Have you ever seen this of Liberace where he's wearing like the spangly, like he's wearing shorts, but they're all like American flags? Short, maybe. He has like a cape and everything's like rhinestones or whatever. Sounds like Liberace. And it was, um, but he's wearing shorts and they're all spangled <laughs> out too. But it's like a crazy. He's 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 behaving like this pose. Amazing. Like he's just going crazy. It's it's awesome, right? See if you can find it. Because okay. it's sort of like this type of thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'll try like to do that, a simple shape of it for um, for cartooning. Yeah, that big. Uh, it's that big show busy thing he did. You know. Uh huh. Now what's this one? This is, he's like, he maybe just got a flyer from school and is like, oh, there's show and tell coming up. And then the path he's on is like towards an alligator farm. That's, that's totally left field. That's kind of interesting. When you're doing this, and again, I know it's a thumbnail right now, so I'm not that worried about it. Mm -hmm. Think about this. This is a ground plane right here, right? So mm -hmm. this, this. path thing Oops. God damn it. because it can even though it's turning it can describe the ground plane a little bit this is never going to work what i'm doing anyway i'll just take this out for a second yeah. this can go this can kind of come out and kind of turn and it can do the thing you want it to do but then it's kind of has to follow this and do that oh uh, okay Does that makes sense see how it feels like it's laying on the ground the right way oh yeah that reads so much better so just think about it so you know you have a ground plane here so if this is a straight path what i like is you didn't do a straight path and you just kind of go it's following the same thing but i just got to follow that same and it's going to get wider as it goes towards you know towards the viewer okay mm -hmm. Um, I like it as an idea. I just think it's a little too left field. Yeah. And then what are they doing here? This is like they're kind of looking around everywhere, like oh, like where is everybody? Go? What like was where, that? Yeah, like where is everybody? Yes, exactly. And then you can see like a bunch of kids hiding behind a bookshelf. What I like about this is like there's been a bunch of ways I've drawn this idea of the kids being afraid of them, and this is a good solution. It's a better solution than I had. Um, I like the kids behind the door because a lot of times when I draw them like all doing this, it starts to feel like they're a little too afraid of them. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of wanted to find something that was like they're wigged out, but they're also like a little curious. Yeah, I like this solution. If you're going to show that they're like freaked out by him or whatever, I like this solution. Does that make sense? Do you freeze? No, I'm here. Oh, okay. That makes sense though, right? You keep disappearing on me. Can you hear me? Yeah. So you heard me? Wait, can you not hear me just when I say yeah? Yeah, every time I go, <laughs> does that make sense? I don't hear you. Now you can hear me, right? Yes. Oh, okay. It makes perfect sense. Well, okay. Use a bigger sentence. Now, on these ones that I'm liking, like this one, I don't think this is bad. I think the way they're looking around, you got to kind of figure that out. Like, where is everybody? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you say that? Because normally you look at somebody else, you go, where is everybody? You know, you can't yeah. But is that Maybe enough? Like, I don't know if that's enough. I get the idea of like doing that, but uh -huh. then that feels more like I'm, I don't know. I don't know. A little salute-ish. But what if they were like looking under a desk? Like one of them is doing that. One of them is looking under a desk. Yeah, I just kind of explore that a little bit. This man, okay. stay small. These are pretty big, right? Yeah. Stay small. Okay. Because when I'm exploring that, like if I'm going, okay, here's my new next idea. 
I'm going to go, okay, the alligator's looking here. I'm not going to draw much more than this. Like he's picking this up. You know, the kid's over here looking, you know, whatever, right? And it's really, at this point, it's just for me to see what works. Because I don't want to invest a bunch of time in just trying to figure out what works from a staging perspective and a pose perspective. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I think that's why I got so burnt out. Like one through 10, I think are a lot stronger than these ones that you're seeing that I did digitally, but still I, I fleshed them out too much. You know, and I'm going to go, okay, I can put this in a clock and I go, okay, and, you know, maybe I like that. Then I go, well, that's not nuancy enough. You know, he's got to be maybe turning his head a little bit. And then I try that. And I just, I mean, I don't do much more than this. And then I go, um, you know, then I got go, you know, for class, if I go, okay, I'm starting to like this one. All I'm going to do is just go, okay, he's, he's smiling. Here's his ear. Maybe he's got a baseball hat on. But I'm not going to do a whole lot. You know, I'm going to maybe flesh out that. I'm just going to make it enough that, like, whoever I'm presenting it to can read it. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. Like, you know. Uh, usually in this class, and I might have done it in another class, the other one you were in, I bring in this, um, I bring in some thumbnails that I traded for at, with a guy over at uh, Disney Feature Animation. <coughs> and they're his thumbnail. When we were trading, he wanted a drawing that I had. And um, anyway, he wanted to buy it. And I go, well, I don't want I don't want to sell it. I go, I'd rather trade it for something. And he's like, well, what? And I go, I want those Moana thumbnails you did for Moana. And he's like, okay, cool. Um, I totally scored on that deal, by the way, because he sent me like five pages of sketches and I sent him one. But um, wow. I love using them for class because they're so rough and so loose. And all he's doing in it is just figuring out expressions for that crab scene in Moana, right? Mm -hmm. I think you talked about that last semester, but yeah, I, I probably did. saw him. Yeah, I might have. Um, if we were in class, you saw him, right? I don't think so. I don't think you uploaded them. Wow. Oh, I might have looked them up on, I think they're on his Instagram, because I think that's where I saw them at, right? Go, hey, I want those Moana thumbnails. Oh, okay. Maybe that's it. So, yeah, that might have been it. Okay, so work on those. Does that make sense? Mm hmm And then I have the other ones in the Google Drive. Okay, I'll look at those. And these, and I'll talk to you about them on, on Wednesday. Okay. <clears throat> look at that Liberace thing, man. I'm not kidding you. He's parading around just like that. Oh, somebody just sent it in the chat. Oh, wow. What? <laughs> uh, JR sent uh, a photo of that, of Liberace. Oh, was it in there? Is it that one? See, those tassels. Hmm. Where is it? Let's see. Damn it, my chat's not. Oh, here it is. Let's see if this is it. I can't see it. Oh. Yeah, that's it. There's a video, though, of him um, in that act or whatever it was. And he's, he's just doing a lot of stuff that that pose reminds me of. Does that make sense? Yeah. Man, the Barachi was over the top, man. He had a house up here for a while. Nice. I have a quick question i sure. know you said not to turn anything in on the assignments but you have it open like we will be graded on it is that where you're putting our grades do you want no. us to put okay so ass the assignments thing is just where i put assignments okay <clears throat> where i sign them um you can load your projects through there i just don't like to use it for that it's just it's because i got to download these and work on them with you and all that kind of stuff it's just not a good it's just not good for file management does that make sense no, totally. It just but shows that's, that that's, that's, that's where I like, create the assignment. That's where I'll grade it and all that stuff. But you just, I just like to use the Google drive instead of that to manage the files. Yeah. Whatever works. Okay. I just want to double check. And because it's just, it's just weird. Cause you don't, it, they're, it's hard to know where they live in there and it's, it takes forever to download them. And if you're doing the Google drive, I can just go in and um, as long as I get in there about a half an hour for a class, I can usually get everything. I usually start before that. As soon as you guys start putting them in there, I'll start down there. Them. <clears throat> and that way I can take them because uh, I, I need to pull them up in Photoshop to work on them. Um, uh, anyway, um, it just works better. Yeah. Cool. I love Canvas. I think Canvas is great, but um, uh, I don't like it for that. 
Okay, I'm going to do, I should have enough time to do one more. Hey, Laura, where's Laura? Where'd Laura go? I see her right there. <coughs> okay, hang on. Okay, I'm assuming Laura's in the bathroom or something. Okay, let me get rid of this. Okay, I want to do Laura's, but I'm not getting any communication with her. Is anybody seeing her in chat? Am I missing something? Are you looking for mine? Yeah, I was looking for you. Yeah, I'm here. Ten minutes later, she says, "Okay, here, I got you." Oh, so sorry. Yeah, these look good. Let's go through these. Uh, so there should be um, three pages of the, like, kind of more finished thumbnails, and then this is just. Um, this is what I did immediately after you told us the concept um, as you were talking about it. Um, I love these two drawings right the here. These two drawings are right there is what that. These two drawings right here are bitching. Especially this one. Yeah? Yeah, you'll see them in the other ones. I, I numbered them in order uh, for which to go through. Yeah. Okay, so here he's presenting, right? Yeah, that's just a simple presentation. It's how I drew the kid, just trying to get the style down. And then uh, other one where he's also presenting, but from a different angle. Uh, I wanted to have a kid in the front. Uh, they, like they're all holding their own projects. One of them's holding like a dog or something and the dog's barking at this alligator that's just kind of sitting there all nice and chill. But then this one here you're talking about, right? Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Then this one, that's self-explanatory, right? I, um, I think about it in the sense of how you read these books. So, like, you look at one page, lead on to another. Um, so, for that one, you kind of get the hint of, a, oh, there's a tail there, and then you go on to the, to the other side of the page, and it's the teacher there. I think every time when you do something like that, with, where he's sort of leaning into a teacher or whatever, um, and engaging or whatever he's doing, I think there needs to be some gesture that he's actually trying to be nice. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. Because he's, I mean, I can tell he's not being mean there. I can tell, but I just like the added thing of like, you know, he's trying to be nice. You know, he's giving her flowers, giving her an apple, whatever. And she's just freaking out. Okay. Okay, what about this one? This other kid's presenting? Yeah, another kid's presenting, and I thought if he's sitting there with the alligator, he's kind of looking back either at the camera or something really slightly. Kind of look at what I got. I don't know. That's kind of interesting. Um, again, though, I have to – my question is, is why shouldn't he be there? Right, yeah. Right? I, right, just to show a clear difference between what you're supposed to do and what you shouldn't do. I like the idea of taking the different perspective where he's not the one presenting they're in the audience and the other kids presenting like a normal thing. Um, but then you got to give me whatever it is. that's weird or whatever about it. Right. Okay. And some of it could be size again or whatever. Right. Some of it could be size and whatever. I don't know what it is. Um, there's, that's a different scenario that you can play with. I like that as a scenario. Because it's a different, it's a totally different solution. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I never, I haven't really taken it from the perspective of like, oh, we're seeing another normal kid presenting normal stuff. And then we've got this, uh, you know, they're in the audience. So what does that mean? You know what I mean? So right now they're very friendly and everything. So again, I go back to like, well, why wouldn't I want him here? You know, because he's cool. He's like a pet, you know, there's got to be some reason why you're like, you can't have an alligator in a classroom. You know, you got to have that. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. 
Just part of the text. Love these drawings, though. Okay, what about this one? So then this is where I want to take it into separate spreads, um, kind of into a, uh, I put it. in the reference page. You're going in and out. Can you hear me? Now I can. Okay, cool. Um, I was trying to reference kind of like, kind of like a Hillary Knight, just sort of like, oh, we're at the center, the illustration just in the center and everything's else white off. Um, I grew up with a lot of Paddington, a lot of Winnie the Pooh. Um, those are great, yeah. All the stuff, yeah. So, like, where it's just centered um, uh, illustrations or leading off with no background, just, just a white face. I love that stuff. I mean, if you want to do that, I'm totally into it. So, what's happening here with this stuff on the left? Uh, the, top, the top left one? Yeah, this one. So, that one I just thought of if it was just to show literally what you should bring, just like in the laid out kind of like a scientific illustration look and then the girl next to it really happy with her alligator I mean, um, you could do that like a very botanist looking kind of thing is that what you mean yeah i meant it, it in my mind i meant it kind of um i guess something you see used for magazine illustrations i know exactly very, what you're talking about it's, yeah. it's, called, it's a botanical illustration basically yeah. um but you if you put that text along it and then you show this sort of botanical illustration there's not me to, I actually think that could work. Just the idea of her cartonist, I think that could be enough. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, I don't think mm -hmm. it always has to be, because sometimes that stark image on a page, I agree with you, is really effective. Right, okay? yeah. Uh, uh, and I love the drawing, okay? And I love the styling and all that stuff, okay? Well, that's one thing about your skill you. set that is, uh, you're lucky with, that you built that up or whatever, is, um, you can have a lot of fun with your, uh, it lo always looks like you're having fun with things stylistically. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's a certain level of proficiency with your drawing that allows you to do that. Okay. Which is a nice thing to have when you're that young, you know? Um, so she's kind of same idea, kind of come up with it here. And then the kids mm -hmm. are sort of pulling back a little bit. Yeah, they're kind of pulling back. Some are happy. I, you can't tell it's super rough. There's the idea like of the that. dog again. I don't like yeah. it. Man, I'm not bitching about the drawing at all. And what I like about it that I'm reading into it is they're not freaking out or anything. They're just yeah, some are like, happy, some are scared, some are hey, intrigued. I like that. Okay. And this is an interesting solution. The botanical idea is an interesting solution. Okay. This is, I like this, just the stark. Boom, boom, you know. Poses are great. It feels like there's, like, especially with this one, it feels clumsy and like he's got a lot of weight to him. Is this like she just got him ready? She's getting him ready? Yeah. Um, again, kind of referencing a bit of Hillary Knight, who did the Eloise books. Um, that's kind of like the idea of where it, yeah, it leads into something. And I was, and I had this drawing of her holding it, but I had nothing for it, but it was, such, I liked the drawing a lot. So then I put these drip marks, like maybe, you'll see the next one is where she kind of discovers um, the alligator in a lake. So like, oh, maybe she pulled him out. But then I thought, would it be cute if it was by a bathtub? I um, think and this like, idea, now I'm not sure if I can go here. Because again, it's like, why is it? I mean, look, you can also right, be common yeah. sensey about it. You can also be common sensey about it and go, clearly you shouldn't bring an alligator to school. Okay, maybe I don't really need to over explain that. Maybe I'm overthinking it, right? The thing I love about this graphically is kind of what you just said, is I love the, the starkness of it, but what really ties it together are these like footprints or whatever, drip marks, whatever. I mean, that really ties it together. Um, the only time the nature I was trying to put back to like, oh, you're supposed to bring in nature stuff was through the window. You'd see some examples of the object out through the window, like the tree or the butterfly, something like that. Uh, and then this last one is if you were just to look, this is no people, you just got the story through looking at a bunch of objects. So maybe this is in the teacher's room. Um, and it's just, a, this is around like what other kids brought. And then you see in the photograph, that's everybody, maybe a picture she took. And then the kid with the alligator. That's kind of, that's a really interesting solution. That's really interesting.
And then these are, okay. These and are more, I, a little more yeah. in an environment. Yeah, I when you first described, oh, our first thing we're going to do is children's illustration. For some reason, I got instantly in my head this sort of woodland idea. Um, the very bottom left one is kind of was the first one. And it was kind of like, oh, so she's in the forest. She's looking for these things, and she comes across this alligator. And it's like, oh, obviously, I shouldn't do this, but look how cute it is. Um, how can I not engage? Sort the problem is, I don't know if it's going to tie enough into the text. Right. Yeah. Um, but I have a backpack on the first believe, page there. Yeah. I also believe, to a certain extent, here, when you're talking about thumbnails, like I'm not expecting every single one. I've said this. I, I'm not expecting every single one to hit it. I mean, I want your brain exploring. So sometimes you're exploring things, and you're kind of like, I'm not going to use this, but I, I need to go here. Because I do right. that all the time. Like I go, my first day at Imagineering, okay, I'm surprised I didn't get fired. And, and uh, anyway, so my, well, I don't know what the hell I was doing. But anyway, my boss came in and he goes, hey, here's your, what I need you to work on or whatever. Mm -hmm. See ya. And he leaves, right? And I'm like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And then anyway, so I got in this thinking all day and I go, well, they're going to fire me. As soon as they come back. Anyway, I went, I have to, this is what I have to do. I have to go way over here in the spectrum. And I have to go way over here on the spectrum, and I end up somewhere, somewhere in in the middle, about ish, right? But I got to explore both those extremes. And when he came back, like at the end of the day, to see what I was doing, I could tell by the look on his face, he's like, "What the hell is this? Like, what is this? What's this got to do with anything?" And I explained to him, "I go, look, I have to explore it all the way to both ends of the spectrum. It's just how I am." And then he got it because he was a really good creative guy, and he goes, "Okay, man, go ahead." Which I think meant like you better come up with something by tomorrow, dude. You, you, you know, you better get it together by tomorrow, whatever. which I did. But um, I, that's just how I have to do it, and I have to let my brain just go everywhere because I don't want to stop it. You know what I mean? Because I don't know what's going to come out of this. Like I might go, I can't do this because it's not related to tech, but it's it's going somewhere, or maybe it doesn't go anywhere. I don't know. They're just thumbnails. Who gives a crap, right? That's what I love about them. There's no money spent. Expend it on it. It's just your time. And, and if you're doing them right and you're doing them quick, it's not that much time. Okay. Well, and this is that first page, right? So this is, yeah, immediately what I was doing as you were describing the text. So those are the first, these are the first ones. Well, that's weird. You came up with that idea right away. This one, that's a really lucky idea. That was the first idea. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I like that. Like, I like that idea. Like, that could be really, I don't know, I can kind of see it in my head, and I don't know what to relate it to, but I can see it in my head a little bit. But what I was going to say is, this, all these, um, the, you know, all these are, are great, okay? There's something really exceptional about this idea, but again, I'm like, is, is it going to be enough to tie it together? in this bit of text we have, right? But what another thing I might do is I might play with this as a compositional idea and as a, just as, as a compositional idea and an idea. Does that make sense? Because I love that you have this. It's sort of like, I don't know which ones came first, but it's like you have this that relates to this. Then you kind of relate this to this a little more because now this, these kids are reacting to this. So it's weird because did this go this one, this one, and this one? I think you're frozen. Yes, it, it, it went that way. Yeah. Okay. So if you look at it, it's interesting because there's a trajectory here. You guys can hear me, right? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. There's a trajectory here that's interesting. So you go, this is an idea. And then this is an idea. Yes, they relate to each other, but not directly. Does that make sense? Yeah. They relate to each other as a story idea. I get it. They relate to each other by the text only. Yeah, but I mean, they relate to each other visually too. But I mean, mm -hmm. it's different. They're not reacting to each other. They're not in the yeah. same environment. Okay. Yeah. Then you have this one, and they're both in opposite environments, but they're both reacting to each other. These, these kids mm -hmm. are reacting to this. So now mm -hmm. you took the same idea of two separate disparate elements on the page. And now you've locked them together. You made them relate. Okay. Then you abstracted it a little more where the way you made them, this is three different ways you made these relate, which is really interesting. 
And then this one, you go, I have this, and then you tied it together with the dress. So now you got this graphic idea with this. Now you still have the start graphic idea on two different pages, but the, the drips drift across the page, and, and that's what they relate to, how they relate to each other. That's super interesting. So you can see your brain going, solving a problem, connecting it, connecting it a different way. Now I would say go and maybe riff on these ideas, and I love this. See if you can riff on this idea and pull this a little more into the story a little bit, but using these kind of elements you're using, especially this. I love this connected tissue, that those drips connecting those things together. Like I love that. And maybe if there's Thank like you. different ways of doing it, maybe it's not a bathtub, maybe it's a this, maybe it's not a that, it's a this. I don't know. You know, maybe she brings carrying. Would a the desk class. work? Like a desk filled with all the stuff. Well, it could. I mean, you got to explore it. And again, I burned through a shit ton of ideas, like just super fast, right? Um, burn through them real fast and just go through a lot of them. But you, you, you. I, I think this is this whole page to me. These three here, and I like this other idea over here. I, I like that you gave yourself a challenge of going. But what if I don't use the, any of the characters? I show it through objects. Like that's super interesting too. But um, I think these three are your directional, uh, your your point of view. I think that's. I think you need to explore these three ideas. Okay, and I love the idea if you could find a way to kind of make this work. I don't know how it works. You know what I mean? But I love that. This is great. And I love these stark pages. I love that. Okay. Um, and when you do it in a watercolor, it's going to be bitching. Have you done watercolor? And illustrations, like all that it is. That's that's what I, I really wanted to do. Thank you. What is it? The, the look of Beatrix Potter, a little bit of the Winnie the Pooh illustrations, um, how simple they are. Very little color, very little background. They're just yeah. kind of there. Have you, have you done any watercolor? Not in a long okay. time, but I'm excited. No, you have, because you were doing gouache stuff in my Saturday class. I've done gouache. I've done gouache more recently. I haven't done a watercolor piece in a while. Okay. Um, we're going to go through a pretty, um, really, really cool. If you like Beatrice Potter, you like all this stuff, you'll like what I'm going to show you. Okay? A lot, yeah. Um, and it's real straightforward. It's real simple. But um, uh, it'll work really cool for this. Okay? They're really, really cool for everybody's stuff, but um, the Stark thing on a page, I guess anything works good for it. You know, it's just, I love, um, I love this technique because it's a very traditional, um, classic technique. Okay. Uh, yeah, where are we at? Sure. Oh, shit, we're at 945. Okay, you guys, so what I'm going to do is I'll finish these off on Wednesday. You guys are doing a great job, by the way. Like, I, I'm always shocked when I get, I'm always worried about, illustration this class in particular because it's all about ideas and then it's going to get in technique and all that but um the idea is to me if you guys are uh talking to me and discussing things and presenting your ideas and you got a bunch of good ideas I, that, I, we're we're halfway home got to have ideas okay um and i'll try and get us through all these thumbnails on thursday so we can start moving forward with uh starting to kind of refine and start to head a little bit into refinement does that make sense Okay, um, what was I gonna say? So I should, if I don't have somebody's, they need to get it in there, okay? Because I have 24 people in here, I think. <clears throat> Last I checked, hang on, I'm gonna unshare. <clears throat> what do I have? Well, now I got 20. Anyway, I have 24. Anyway, um, I wanna make sure that I, I get through everybody's on Wednesday, is that? Does that make sense? Okay. So you guys that I've already talked to, you can start working on it, but I don't have to see them on Wednesday because I got to get through everybody else's first. Then we'll hopefully finish it all up on Monday and then we can go into um, refinement. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, you guys. If yep. you have any questions, buzz me. All right. All righty. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, you guys. Good job. Thank you. Thanks.